The Protector Chapter 151 Shocking! Extremely shocking! This was definitely the most unforgettable thing ever experienced by the thousand people present at the scene. Monica, Yelda, Zack and the others did not think that they would bump into Levi here, let alone come to find out that he was a king among peasants. Kieran continued to say, God of War, please follow me to the first row. It is the only place befitting of your status. Levi nodded his head, M.M. The audience was slowly recovering from their shock. Kieran turned around slowly and looked at the Rogers family. He said, Glenn, didn't you ask me who my master is? Let me tell you, my master is none other than the commander-in-chief of the Nine Great War Zone, Arudaya's only five-star god of war. Oh yes, his name is Levi. Upon hearing Kieran's declaration, Glenn could not suppress the congested blood in his mouth and coughed it out violently. Anthony's face darkened. He staggered and collapsed on the ground. Leo's blood pressure spiked, and he fainted under the sudden pressure. Each member of the Rogers family was at the verge of a breakdown. Levi is actually the god of war. This was what the Rogers family was most unwilling to accept. Disaster A major disaster was approaching the Rogers family. The Rogers family was on its way to destruction, starting from the moment Kieran stood beside Levi. No one was able to rescue the Rogers family. What? Levi is the god of war? I don't believe it. I don't believe this. Yo-Yo was unwilling to accept. The fact. Yo-Yo had felt carefree after Levi had been ridiculed. The chain of events had allowed her to make a quick comparison between Levi and Luke, and Luke had come above. She thought that Levi would never be able to match up to Luke in this lifetime. However, in the blink of an eye, Levi transformed into Arudaya's god of war. Before him, Luke was a nobody. Yo-Yo could see a world of difference between them, but she was unwilling to accept the truth. Leon Watson and the others were shocked to realize that the boy they used to bully had turned out to be someone extremely outstanding. He is the only five-star god of war. Levi did not retaliate when they insulted him just now, not because he was fearful, but because he could not be bothered with them. They were insignificant to Levi, so there was no point crushing them under his feet. May stared in disbelief. Like everyone, she also thought that Levi had fallen from the peak of his success. She also tried to step on him in order to derive some sort of pleasure. However, who would have thought that he could grow significantly stronger and more powerful in a span of six years? Abigail broke into a cold sweat and looked at Levi in fear. Levi touched her head and smiled, Silly girl, why are you so anxious? Regardless of my identity, I am still your brother-in-law. Oh! Abigail trailed after Levi. With everyone looking at them, Kieran took the lead while Levi and Abigail followed behind. They walked slowly towards the front. When they saw Levi inching closer towards them, May and Yo-Yo felt as though their hearts were about to fly out of their throats. At this moment, their hearts felt as though they were about to explode. Levi then stopped at their row all of a sudden. At that instant, May, Yo-Yo, and the others felt like dying. They felt numb all over as though an electric current had passed through their bodies, electrocuting them. A gust of cold air rushed up from the solace of their feet, instantly making their blood freeze. Levi barked, get out of the way. At his command, the people in the row excused themselves from both ends, leaving only May and the others behind. The Protector Chapter 152 When May saw Levi's gaze settle on her, her breathing quickened, and she struggled to breathe. Hiccup. 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 Leon, Bryce and others could not withstand such immense pressure. They fainted and collapsed onto the ground with a loud thud. May and Yo-Yo were extremely nervous. With his status, Levi had the authority to sentence them to death. 
Levi looked at the two women and laughed, just now, didn't you ask me if I regretted rejecting both of you last time? May and Yo-Yo did not dare to look into Levi's eyes. Let me tell you this now. I have never regretted it. No matter when or what happens, I will only choose Zoe. Whether she is poor or rich, young or old, I will still choose her. Levi said. At this moment, May and Yo-Yo envied Zoe so much. Six years ago, they had been green with jealousy when Levi and Zoe got together. They were even more jealous of them now. Levi was at the pinnacle of the military regime of Arudaya. He was invincible and possessed all the power in his hands. Even if that was the case, he would not forsake or abandon his wife. This is deep, profound love. Many people were extremely touched. Not taking Levi's identity into account, their love and affection towards each other was a subject of envy. One will not leave, and the other will not be abandoned. Abigail was the most envious of them. Finally, Levi said to the two of them, like what Abigail said, her brother-in-law was at his peak six years ago, and now, her brother-in-law is still at his peak. Thump! Upon hearing Levi's words, Yo-Yo and May could not take it and fell onto the ground. They were drenched in cold sweat. Levi and Kieran arrived at the front row and sat down. He had Kieran and Abigail beside him. Stephen Shaw was there too. The moment Levi appeared, people no longer had the word master in mind. At this moment, everyone understood why Kieran had worn his military uniform. He was not here to attend the celebration. He was here on a mission. Levi waved his hand. Kieran understood immediately. Kieran commanded the mass of people, except for the Rogers family, everyone else, please leave. Quickly. Please keep this matter confidential. You will be asking for trouble if you dare to reveal this. With this in mind, everyone made their way out, dying to escape from the scene as quickly as possible. Leo Watson and the others were carried away. May and Yo-Yo crawled out. The venue was cleared very soon. Levi said to Abigail, Abigail, please wait for me in the living room. I need to settle some matters. Abigail also left obediently. After that, everyone from the Rogers family knelt in front of Levi. They kowtowed before him, begging for mercy. Where is Levi group? Levi asked. Please take it back. Levi group has always been yours. How about the Garrison family's properties? Levi questioned further. They are also yours. Levi continued, Rogers family. At this moment, everyone in the Rogers family hesitated. However, Glenn responded immediately and said, also yours. Levi lit a cigarette and smiled, all right, then let's start discussing more important matters. Back then, you framed me, killed my friend, and even seized everything from the Levi group. Why? Did you do that? Levi questioned. God of War, it was you who dabbled in the pharmaceutical and technology markets back then, and the Rogers family coveted your core technologies. The Rogers family answered honestly. Levi took a deep breath before continuing, give me the names of the others who were involved in this matter back then. The Protector Chapter 153 the Rogers family replied, God of War, even though we planned everything under Oswald's name. Back then, the Rogers family actually benefited the least from it. We only benefited from a small part of the core technologies and took over Levi Group. The bulk of it went to the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Levi furrowed his eyebrows. Yes. It is made up of the four aristocratic families the Hendersons, the Williamsons, the Andersons, and the Robinsons. There are also a lot of business associations consisting of rich corporations. They dominate Northampton, and are in a tight competition with Winston Gonzalez, the richest person in Northampton. Glenn said. Levi knew about the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. 
the former hegemon of Northampton's world of commerce. It was known that the Northampton Chamber of Commerce held nearly half of Northampton's economic lifeline. Their annual GDP contributions were frightening. When Levi succeeded in starting his own business, the Northampton Chamber of Commerce wooed him to join them. However, their condition was that he had to hand over the core medical technologies of Levi Group. Levi rejected the proposal. In retrospect, Levi had already been a target of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Because he had rejected them, he was maimed and imprisoned. His brother had been killed, and his wife had lived as a widow for six years. The business world was akin to a battlefield and might even be more deadly. Despite how decent wealthy entrepreneurs looked on the surface, they could actually be blood-sucking cannibals, swallowing people up whole. The number of people who had lost their lives because of the rich was unfathomable. Levi was insignificant to them, so many people might have forgotten about him. He was not worth remembering at all. At this moment, Azure Dragon and Phoenix had arrived. They informed Levi that those online products were from the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Tap tap tap. Levi tapped his fingers rhythmically on the armrest. Since that is so, let Northampton Chamber of Commerce disappear. Levi ordered. The Rogers family were on the floor, not doubting what Levi said. The four giants of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce believed that their wealth dominated. Northampton with their influential businesses. No one could affect them. Messing with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce was akin to messing with Northampton's foundation. However, they would not expect the God of War to be the one messing with them. Glenn asked, God of War, will the properties and businesses under Levi Group and the Rogers family be transferred to you? Transfer them to Kieran. Levi said. Within a few hours, all the properties and businesses under Levi Group, the Garrison family, and the Rogers family were transferred to Kieran. Kieran's real name was Neil Rhodes. From then on, Neil became the new owner of all the Rogers family's assets. As for the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, Levi wanted to take his sweet time torturing them. He wanted to see them go insane with his tricks and watch them become fearful as they beg for deaths. Arrival Levi's gaze fell on Anthony all of a sudden. Did you say earlier that you wanted to attack and kill? Me. Anthony was shocked to hear Levi's words. Please spare my life, spare my life. Levi stood up and smiled, spread the news. Say that Mr. Rhodes has become the owner of Levi Group. And Garrison Group. Understood. Glenn responded. Oh yes, I hope to see Oswald tomorrow morning. He owes my wife an apology. There was a look of malice in Levi's eyes. After that, Levi left, bringing Abigail along with him. When they were about to reach the exit, they bumped into Pamela and Bailey. Abigail, why are the both of you leaving? Pamela asked curiously. Abigail looked at them, feeling confused. Dad, Mum, the celebration is over. Bailey retorted immediately, what rubbish. It only started thirty minutes ago. The celebration lasts for about four hours, doesn't it? The Protector Chapter 154 It's really over. Do you not believe me? Abigail said helplessly. Pamela stared at Levi and said, Abigail, why did you even bring him here? How embarrassing. Yes. If not for you, what right does he have to attend the celebration? Bailey shot back at Abigail and proceeded to enter the venue with Pamela. Abigail really wanted to tell them that the celebration ended because of Levi. However, her parents had already gone ahead. Bailey and Pamela were in shock when they entered the venue. There was not a single soul in sight. They saw Glenn and the others on their knees, drenched in cold sweat. They tried their best to get an answer from the Rogers family, but no one revealed the reason. Outside, Levi looked at Abigail whose head was lowered. She seemed fearful of him, 
so he could not help but ask, Why are you afraid of me? I am still your brother-in-law. Abigail lifted her head all of a sudden and planted a kiss on Levi's face. Crash! Thankfully, Levi was quick to respond, if not, Abigail would have kissed him. Levi was shocked by Abigail's reaction, W what are you doing? Abigail chuckled in delight, brother-in-law, you were so cool just now. Flabbergasted, Levi almost vomited blood. Wasn't she terribly afraid of me just now? Why did she try to kiss me all of a sudden? Young girls have such strange ideas these days. As they headed towards the car, Abigail laughed and said, Brother-in-law, you are my idol from now. On. Two strange things happened in Northampton today. Firstly, the Rogers family's 40th anniversary celebration had been suddenly interrupted. All the guests. Left without a reason. Why was that so? Secondly, news broke out that a mysterious man known as Neil Rhodes had taken over both the Garrison Group and Levi Group. With regard to these two matters, the Rogers family kept mum about them, saying that they were trade secrets. What on earth is the Rogers family doing, handing over Levi Group and the Garrison Group? What was the Rogers family's celebration about? So secretive. Who is this person called Mr. Rhodes? How is he related to them? The news spread across several luxurious villas in Northampton, attracting the attention of the four giants of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. When Levi and Abigail returned home, Aaron and Caitlin were around. Caitlin stared at Levi, you are forever frolicking around with nothing better to do. If you are so free, why don't you help Zoe out? Why bother attending such a celebration? Are you even qualified to be there? Bailey humphed, yes, that's right. Levi, we hope that you can rely on your own ability to attend such a celebration instead of depending on Abigail. Zoe also felt that Levi liked to join in the fun at such celebrations. Casting all grievances with the Rogers family aside, she felt that there was no need for Levi to attend. The celebration since he did not have the status to do so. Levi laughed, Dad, Mum, and Zoe, I was at the Rogers family to deal with something. Aaron, Bailey and the others were dubious when they heard Levi. They asked, What's the matter? I went to settle some scores with Oswald. Levi responded. Zoe was shocked. She was afraid that Levi would do something foolish. Things would get out of hand if they were targeted by the Rogers family. Zoe told her parents about what happened the other day. What? So it was Oswald who planned the entire thing. But Levi, what did you do? You almost beat Oswald to death? Do you want to die? If you plan to die, then don't drag us into it. Aaron and Caitlin spoke angrily. Zoe asked, worried, what did you do to the Rogers family today? Levi said, the Rogers family will bring Oswald here personally to make an apology. The Protector Chapter 155 Ha 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 ha! After hearing this, Aaron and Caitlin roared in laughter. What are you talking about? The Rogers family will come here to apologize? Are you drunk? The Rogers family is one of the most highly regarded aristocratic families in Northampton. They have assets worth tens of billions. Why would they come to apologize to you? Do you honestly think you are such an important figure? Beating up Oswald and even getting them to bring him here to make an apology. Aaron and Caitlin looked at Levi. They simply could not believe it. Zoe was not going to believe him either. Even the Levi who was at his peak six years ago would not have such a capability. Abigail saw that they did not believe him and smiled in secret. As she was reminded of what happened at the celebration, she shot a look of envy towards Zoe. In Abigail's eyes, Zoe was the most fortunate woman on earth. However, Abigail felt that she had an advantage over her cousin because she knew about Levi's real identity. Abigail felt a warm, fuzzy feeling in her heart when she thought about it. 
Zoe looked at Abigail and asked, Abigail, is that so? Abigail shook her head, I don't know. She was in the living room at that time, so it was true that she did not know the details. Levi said, I spoke privately with the Rogers family. Abigail was not around. Ha ha ha. Who do you think you are? What right do you have to talk privately with the Rogers family? Aaron and Caitlin laughed. Zoe also thought that Levi was bragging, so she did not take it to heart. Aaron and Caitlin did not leave that night. They continued to stay in Bayview Garden. There was a knock on the door the next morning. Zoe opened the door and got a shock. Glenn, Anthony and the others were here. They even brought Oswald, who came in a wheelchair. Why are you here? Zoe appeared confused. Aaron and Caitlin were extremely puzzled. Ms. Lopez, the Rogers family is here to make an apology to you. On behalf of Oswald's foolish behavior, we would like to sincerely apologize to you. Glenn, Anthony and the others bowed. Bang! At the same time, Glenn kicked the wheelchair, and it tipped over. Oswald, who was handicapped, toppled to the floor. His voice trembled, Ms. Lopez, I, I am in the wrong, I will and never dare to do it again. Please forgive me. At this moment, Zoe and her parents were in total shock. Their minds went blank. They never expected that the Rogers family would come over to make an apology. Levi was right. In order to express our sincerity, we would like to compensate Ms. Zoe Lopez with a 100 million for any psychological harm caused. The sum of money has been wired into Imperial Meadows Limited's bank account, Glenn said. Zoe's phone rang. It was a message from the finance department. There was indeed a transfer of 100 million. Get up quickly. Seeing all these rich aristocrats standing in front of her, Zoe's heart could not stop racing. Aaron and Caitlin were also frightened. Glenn asked, Ms. Lopez, can you please forgive us? Yes. Zoe exclaimed. That's great. Goodbye, Ms. Lopez. The Rogers family left quickly, dragging Oswald away. At this moment, Levi sauntered over, drinking a cup of warm milk. Have they apologized? Levi, how did you do it? Oh my God! Glenn from the aristocratic Rogers family actually came to make an apology. Aaron and Caitlin looked at Levi curiously. Zoe thought that it was miraculous. Very simple. I made things clear to the Rogers family. Besides, they are also quite understanding and reasonable. Levi said plainly. Indeed, I reasoned things out with them last night. With guns pointing at their faces, how could they not understand and be reasonable? The Protector Chapter 156 Aaron said immediately, Actually, the more powerful they are, the more likely they are willing to make peace. They also pay more attention to morality and etiquette. If not, would they be able to Remain in their current positions. Caitlin also nodded her head, yes, that's right. These important figures are reasonable and easy to talk. Too. Zoe felt that something was fishy, but she could not put a finger on it. She knew that Levi could not compare to the Rogers family in terms of status and ranking. Next, let's prepare ourselves to attend your grandmother's birthday party. We need to choose some. Exquisite gifts for her. Let's brainstorm for a suitable gift and buy it on another day. Caitlin. Emphasized the importance of her mother's birthday party. Aaron thought the same. As the son-in-law of the Black family, it would be great if he could shine at the birthday party. Aaron and Caitlin were very confident after receiving the huge sum from the Rogers family. Everything was back to normal. Zoe's project was starting to take flight again. There were numerous companies who requested for a collaboration. After all, with the development of the ecological park, there would be markets for the catering of food and beverages, accommodation and the like. 
companies that were fast and efficient could take advantage of the opportunities available. Oh yes, Levi, I will have to attend a meeting to discuss the collaboration in the afternoon. A foreign catering company intends to work with us on Western cuisine. Would you like to go? Zoe asked in the morning. Go ahead with the collaboration. I have other things to attend to. It was because Levi really had some serious matters to deal with. Azure Dragon and the others informed him about it. He arrived at the manor where Azure Dragon and the others lived. Phoenix approached him with a document. Reporting to you, God of War. The Dragon Legion of the Iron Brigade has successfully completed its mission and evacuated the front line. According to the protocol, we will now retreat to the neighboring province of the South War Zone to rest and reorganize. Please give us your orders. Phoenix reported. To Levi. Levi glanced at the document and nodded, All right, let Dragon Legion rest and reorganize. Wait for my next orders. As the commander-in-chief of the Ninth War Zone, Levi had the responsibility and the power to mobilize the guards. However, the guards he usually deployed to the frontier battlefields were from the Iron Brigade. He had personally trained them. The Iron Brigade was divided into several teams. Dragon Legion's combat skills were top-notch. They were the most powerful. Dragon Legion had been fighting at the border for two years in a row, so it was high time for them to rest and reorganize themselves. This is quite timely. I will be heading to South City to attend Zoe's grandmother's birthday party. Soon. I will head to South War Zone then. Levi said. That is really good news. The guards from the Dragon Legion would like to meet you. Phoenix beamed. After returning home that night, Zoe told Levi that the collaboration went well and was successful. Fick Group sealed the collaboration after putting in a deposit of 30 million. This was the first sum of money Zoe received for the project. She gave Levi a card. What are you doing? Levi was stunned. Didn't you borrow 5 million last time? Return the money quickly. It turned out that Zoe always had this in mind. All right then, I will keep it. Levi kept the card. He then started to look at Fick Group's contract. He found out that it was a member of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. This is a company owned by foreigners. They are given such preferential treatment in terms of the area and policy. The conditions are much better than the domestic companies. Levi sighed. It seemed that this area attracted foreigners to come and develop, with policies giving them great access and preferential treatment. There were even times when they had direct access to certain areas. Zoe laughed, do you only know about this now? It has always been like this. These foreigners always have special privileges when they set up businesses in our country. It cannot be helped. Levi grew serious. Are they so superior? What a joke. The Protector Chapter 157 Zoe shook her head, it cannot be helped. It is true that they are superior. Everyone is in silent. Agreement. Levi frowned, we are in mighty Arudaya. Since when did they become more superior than us? It cannot be helped. Foreigners are welcomed everywhere. Those international students are treated so well in terms of welfare benefits. Moreover, many girls like meeting these international students. When they see foreigners around, they get so excited to hang out with them. This is a common phenomenon, so even if you find it unfair, it cannot be helped. Zoe shrugged her shoulders. It was a recent phenomenon. In some cases, when people participated in biddings, they focused on the fact that the companies were owned by foreigners instead of looking at the strength and future prospects of the companies. A coldness shone in Levi's eyes. Oh yes, I plan to buy a house for Dad with this money. However, the old house is under his name. He 
also wants to put the old house under mum's name tomorrow at the housing authority. What do you think? Zoe asked. It's your own money, so you can decide what you want to do with it. Aaron arrived at the housing authority the next morning. There was a long queue at the entrance of the housing authority. He queued for almost an hour before it was his turn. When Aaron entered with the document in his hands, two people rushed in front of him and jumped the queue. Hey, 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 what are you doing? You are jumping the queue. Aaron yelled. The two tall men in front turned around to look at him. They were foreigners. With a sneer, they flipped him off. Stay away from us. Aaron was momentarily stunned. He had queued for almost an hour. Not only was his turn skipped, but he was also yelled at and insulted. This is pure bullying. Aaron was not the only one who was unhappy. The people behind him were also upset. What right do they have to jump queue? Everyone was patiently waiting for their turn, so what gave them the right to jump the queue? It was the peak period. There were at least 70 to 80 people behind Aaron. The two people had jumped the queue as soon as they arrived. They even had the audacity to cut to the front of the line, angering many people in the queue. Queue from the back. Don't cut the queue. Go to the back right now. Regardless of your background, go and join the end of the queue. Everyone yelled and shouted at the two foreigners. It caused a public outrage. However, the two foreigners were unbothered and did not even bother to turn around. Seeing that many people were also upset and on his side, Aaron grew more courageous and went forward to shove the men. The two of them turned around. One of them said, expressing his displeasure, What do you want? You cannot just cut in as you please. Walk to the back and join the queue from there. Do you not see? All the people in the queue. Aaron spoke coldly. The others chimed in, Yes, go to the back of the line. You have no special privileges. You are just like us. The two foreigners sneered, Humph. We have never joined any queues since we arrived in Arudaya. All right? We have special privileges and are given priority in whatever we do. Besides, our matters are more important than all of yours. What do you mean by priority? Who said that? You need to queue up no matter where you go. What is so important? Quickly, join the queue at the back. Everyone shouted. It's my turn next. The two of you, go to the back. Aaron stepped forward with his document, prepared to enter the housing authority. However, he was stopped by the two foreigners. One of them snatched Aaron's document away from him and mercilessly tore it into strips. The Protector Chapter 158 Boom! Aaron was stunned. The others too. They did not expect the two foreigners to be so daring. They actually tore up someone's document. Low life. Scram. Get out of our way. The two foreigners pointed their middle fingers at Aaron again. They cursed and insulted him, and even shoved him around. Aaron was furious. I will fight you till the end. Aaron was certainly not their opponent. They were about 1.9 meters tall. Soon, he had two slap marks. On his face. A huge commotion erupted. The staff from the housing authority appeared. A middle-aged man said angrily, I am Neville, the director on duty today. If there is anything, please. Let me know. Everyone shouted, they jumped the queue. They even tore up someone's application document and hit the man. Aaron too cried and complained about what had happened to him. Despite their complaints, the director immediately sent the two foreigners into the hall. Gentlemen, please come with me. You have more important business matters to attend to. Neville actually did such a thing with so many pairs of eyes looking at him. Such an action naturally made everyone angry, and they reacted strongly to the situation. Why? Why are they allowed to enter? 
yes, why can they jump the queue? Do foreigners have special privileges? Neville signaled everyone to calm down and keep quiet. Let me explain why. Some people have special privileges. They've come to our country to help us. Develop and generate as much income as possible to spur our economy. Compared to most of you, their affairs are more important. So what if they jumped the queue? They did not really affect you, did they? Neville made an attempt to explain. But. What do you mean but? If you don't wish to proceed, then please leave. Neville was harsh. Everyone got back in line and did not protest anymore. Aaron was furious. He lashed out, how about what happened to me? Give me an explanation. My. Document was torn. Neville looked at the pieces of paper on the floor and said coldly, your document is torn? Then make. Another application. Then how about them laying their hands on me? Aaron pointed at his face. Neville laughed, my staff said that you were the one who started it first. You, Aaron was exploding with rage. Just then, an employee ran out and whispered in Neville's ear. Neville's expression changed as he glowered at Aaron, do you still wish to continue with your application? Aaron was stunned, what do you mean? The two gentlemen are really angry with your behavior just now. They want you to kneel down and apologize to them before they can forgive you. Neville said. Aaron could not believe his ears, what? They were the ones who jumped the queue and ruined my document. Why should I kneel down and apologize? What kind of law is that? You are obviously in the wrong. Neville said in a serious tone. Aaron was shocked at his response, my fault. Did you know? The two gentlemen are important figures. Their business enterprises generate a lot of revenue and have provided many jobs. This benefits all of you in Northampton. Their time is precious, so what's wrong with them jumping queue? You actually wasted their time, so isn't that your fault? Aaron was shocked at the warped reasoning, what do you even mean? Me? You? What about you? Do you still want to carry on with the paperwork? I have made myself clear. If you are not going to apologize to them, then you can forget about settling your paperwork. Trust me, I can blacklist you forever. Neville was obviously threatening him. The Protector Chapter 159 Aaron was flummoxed. He did not expect such a thing to happen. He did not even think that Neville could be so cruel and harsh to him in favor of those two foreigners. The onlookers also did not dare to say a word. Neville was not going to deal with administrative matters if they had something to say. Everyone could only turn a blind eye to Aaron's predicament. What do you think? Spit it out. Neville commanded in a harsh tone. I choose to apologize and redo the paperwork. Aaron lowered his head at the end of the day. In order to have a new house to stay in, he bit the bullet and chose to apologize. It was the only way he could ensure the necessary documentation was done. All right, the two gentlemen happen to have time today. They want you to queue at the back. When you get to the front again, you can then apologize to them. Once they are satisfied with your performance, I will proceed with your application and paperwork. Neville patted Aaron's face after saying so. Aaron was about to explode from rage. The two gentlemen said earlier that their time was precious, but when it came to ridiculing him, they actually had the time to wait for him to rejoin the queue. All right, I agree to that. Aaron endured once again. He proceeded to join the back of the queue. The two gentlemen laughed out loud after witnessing what had happened. They even flashed their middle fingers at Aaron, still cursing him. Neville grinned at the two foreigners while serving them coffee and snacks. Aaron stood at the back, fuming. The more he thought about it, the angrier he felt. He could not let them walk all over him. Maybe I should ask Levi for help. 
When Levi received Zoe's call informing him that Aaron was in trouble, he dashed directly to the housing authority. He found out that there was a long, snaking queue at the housing authority. Aaron was standing right at the end of the line, his expression clouded over. There were two slap marks on his face. Levi walked over to him and asked, Dad, what happened to you? Levi, I was hit. Aaron acted like Levi was his savior and told him everything that had happened. Levi grew furious after listening to Aaron. He had discussed this problem with Zoe last night, but he did not expect it to happen to his father-in-law today. Levi walked to the front of the line with Aaron in tow. Come, Dad, I will demand an explanation for you. How can we just forget all about this and brush this aside? Levi said angrily. Once again, Aaron felt a sudden surge of courage and confidence and rushed to the front with Levi. Who hit him? Come out now. Levi stood at the entrance and questioned in a demanding voice. Neville walked out with several employees in tow. When Neville saw that it was Aaron, he shot back angrily, What do you want? Didn't I ask you to? Cue at the back. Let me ask again. Who hit him? Levi asked coldly. Are you yelling now? Did you get someone to come to your rescue? Let me tell you this, you can. Forget about settling this paperwork from now on. I will stop you from doing so forever. Neville flew. Into a rage. Aaron was shocked by his tirade. Levi glanced at his name tag and sneered, Your name is Neville, right? Yes, so what? Are you going to write me up? Neville pointed at Levi's nose and yelled at him. Levi could not be bothered with him. He whipped out his phone and dialed a number. Hello, is this Jesse? Please get the captain of the housing authority to make a trip down. Ask him if he knows someone by the name of Neville. Levi ordered. Jesse wiped the perspiration on his forehead upon picking up the call. The first secretary, Cedric, asked, what happened? Quickly inform Mark from the housing authority to make a trip down there. Someone named Neville. Has offended God of War. Jesse instructed. After seeing Levi hand up, Neville snorted, why? Are you done with the call? Do you want to get me? Into trouble or do you want to fire me? The Protector Chapter 160 Levi pushed him away and walked towards the hall. His gaze landed on the two foreigners. Were you? The ones who hit him. At the sight of Levi, both of them stood up and walked towards him. Yes, we were the ones who hit him. Why? Do you want to seek revenge for him? The two of them spoke choppy English while looking disdainfully at Levi. Apologize. Since you've hit him, then you should have the guts to apologize. Levi ordered. Apologize? Impossible. Why should we apologize to you critters? Both men looked extremely smug. Levi and Aaron were considered lowlifes in their eyes. The two foreigners refused to pay them any attention at all. Apologize. You have to apologize for hitting him. Levi was very determined. He shot a cold glare at them. The two foreigners were unhappy with the way Levi was staring at them. As they were much taller than Levi, they looked down at him condescendingly. One man extended an arm to push him. Thump. However, Levi reacted as quickly as lightning and kicked his knee. The man groaned when his foot made contact and collapsed onto the ground in agony. Thump. It was the same for the other foreigner. He kneeled down on the ground and screamed in pain. The both of them struggled to get up, but Levi stepped on their shoulders. They looked deflated and could no longer get up. They could only kneel down obediently. Dad, do what they did to you. Since they slapped you, you will return them the favor. Levi told. Aaron. Aaron hesitated for a while before walking towards them. Slap. 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 He gave them few continuous slaps. The clear, 
crisp sound filled the room. Aaron let out a breath that he had been holding in all this while. Great. This is great. I feel so good. Everyone outside clapped and cheered for them. Who is able to endure the sight of our own being bullied in our own territory? This is so good. Remember, you are in Arudaya. You have to cooperate with us at the very least. This is not where you can throw your weight around because of your special privileges. Levi chastised. The two foreigners continued to stare at Levi in disdain. Such a low life. Let's wait and see what will happen to you. Neville continued, yes, you are doomed. Do you know what you have just done? I asked them for an apology. Was that so wrong? Levi replied. He kicked the two foreigners and commanded, apologize. First, apologize for jumping the queue. Second, apologize for tearing up the application document. Third, apologize for hitting people. At this moment, Aaron thought that his son-in-law was a domineering person. How is he a useless piece of trash? Aaron too exclaimed, yes. Apologize. Hey. Do you know what on earth you are doing? You are in deep trouble. Neville shouted. Levi did not care about what Neville had to say. He stared furiously at the two foreigners and laughed. You don't wish to apologize, right? All right. I have a way to make you obey. Also, you will be deported and kicked out of Arudaya. Do you even know what you are doing? Are you crazy? You are finished. Neville warned. Levi laughed, why? Are you unhappy seeing your foreign masters kneel on the ground? I heard that. You were the one who gave them such privileges. I would like to ask you what right do they have to be granted these privileges? Our fellow countrymen have been waiting in queue for one to two hours, and yet you let these foreigners jump the queue as they like. Are you going to keep this up? Let me tell you this. I will not settle your paperwork for you from now on. Neville threatened them. Haha, <laughs> then let's wait and see. At this moment, a white luxury car stopped outside. The Protector Chapter 161 Two people got out of the car and jogged toward the scene in a hurry. Neville was surprised to see the people moving in his direction. He quickly welcomed them. I thought. You went to attend a meeting, sir? Why have you returned all of a sudden? Mark stared at Neville hatefully. Then he shouted. You're fired, Neville Heath. Boom. Neville was shocked to his core as he looked at Mark in disbelief. Then he turned to gaze at Levi. I saw him making a phone call earlier. I can't believe this. Why am I? Fired? Neville wanted to retort after recollecting his thoughts, but Mark shoved him aside. Get lost. I don't want to listen to your explanation. I am already aware of the entire incident. Mark came to a halt in front of Levi in the lobby and addressed the latter with a smile, Mr. Garrison, I am here to apologize to you after being informed of the things that happened earlier. Then, he spoke to his employees we will treat our customers on a first-come first-serve basis. According to the rules from now on, anyone who does not make an appointment will have to wait for their turn. Any employee who makes an exception for any customer will face a similar fate as Neville. Heath. Yes. Everyone agreed with Mark's announcement. Stop processing their documents. They will have to wait in line obediently for their turn. Mark ordered harshly. Both foreigners were almost done with the procedures, but Mark erased all their data on the computer. They had no choice but to redo everything. That's the outcome we wanted to see. Everyone was excited. Mark then arranged for his employee to reprocess Aaron's procedure that had been destroyed. Previously, the foreigners were dumbfounded. They did not expect Mark to be so adamant. Mark walked up to them in a displeased manner. We will not process your documents if you do not. Apologize. 
you will have to leave the country when the time comes. Consider your options and make a decision now. The foreigners exchanged glances and yielded in the end. They looked at Levi and Aaron. We are sorry. Is that sufficient? Well, I do not accept your apologies, Levi responded unexpectedly. People like you should be deported. The crowd supported Levi's statement. That's right. They should be deported. How dare they act like barbarians in this place? Yet. Yeah. Chase them away. Levi contacted Xavier to check the foreigners' backgrounds. Xavier discovered a lot of problems with the foreigners' profiles. For instance, they faked their travel. Visa. That reason alone was more than enough for them to be deported. Xavier's subordinate arrived at the venue swiftly and warned the foreigners to leave the country within a week. Otherwise, they would be deported. They stared at Levi and Aaron resentfully before taking their leave. In the end, Aaron achieved his aim and completed the procedure. He was extremely satisfied with Levi's performance that day. You made a wise decision to contact the boss of this place and dealt with this matter effortlessly. Aaron smiled. Levi was stunned. Well, technically, the boss came because I ordered him to. The two foreigners were furious as they went home. We'll kill you, Levi Garrison. At that moment, a man dressed in a white suit arrived. He asked the foreigners. Terry, Drake, have you been given the warning to leave the country? The Protector Chapter 162 That man was the owner of Fick Group, Charles Dickens. Terry and Drake were his younger brothers. They had moved to Northampton, intending to settle down in the city. But trouble found them almost immediately. At that moment, Charles's men had already updated him with the news he wanted to know. The person who bullied you is my business partner, Zoe Lopez's husband, Levi Garrison. Charles said coldly. We must get our revenge against him. Drake and Terry said fiercely while covering their swollen faces. Charles's eyes gleamed dangerously. Very well. I will toy with his wife since he dared lay a finger on my brothers. Zoe Lopez's body is too alluring to resist. I will make the arrangements to get her into my bed tomorrow. Both of you will join me by that time. You can have your revenge on her anyway. You like. He he he, Drake and Terry laughed lecherously. That's the plan for now. I will invite Zoe Lopez to a banquet tomorrow night. Then we will get her. Drunk. The next day, Chloe was waiting at the entrance when Levi exited Bayview Garden. Are you waiting for me? Levi was surprised. Are you free tonight? Let me treat you to a meal. I received my salary today, and thanks to you, the amount was very generous indeed. So I feel the need to treat you to dinner, Chloe said joyfully. I earned a total of eight million last month because of the commission from the two properties Levi bought from me. This is surreal. All right. Tell me the venue. I'll be there later. Chloe was delighted when Levi agreed to her offer. We'll have dinner at Grand Imperial Hotel. Tonight. Got it. Meanwhile, Zoe was invited to a dinner banquet hosted by the Fit Group to celebrate their collaboration. Zoe agreed to attend the banquet without any hesitation because of Fit Group's sincerity during their previous discussion. She did not question their intention because they even invited Zoe's secretary. The event was held inside the VIP private room in Grand Imperial Hotel that night. Zoe noticed a lot of people inside the room when she arrived. Charles introduced the other guests to Zoe as his business partners. They were are eager for an opportunity to collaborate with Zoe's company. Zoe completely lowered her guard. Hard liquor was served during the banquet, but Charles deliberately prepared low-alcohol wine for Zoe and her secretary. Despite the low-alcohol content, they were forced to drink continuously due to the rounds of toasts. 
Zoe was getting a little tipsy even though she merely sipped her drink every time. Charles said courteously. Ms. Lopez, our norm is quite different from the locals in Arudaya. We drink. With alacrity when we're among ourselves, unlike the businessmen we've seen in this country. Charles did not urge Zoe to drink throughout the banquet. But he would utter comments from time to time, indirectly forcing Zoe to drink the wine to get along with the other business partners. Zoe had no choice but to obey because she did not want to ruin the atmosphere. Soon, she was drunk. Thump. After a few more rounds, Zoe finally fell face front on the tabletop as her consciousness faded. A menacing smile spread across Charles's face at that sight. Zoe's secretary sensed the peculiar turn of events, but her condition was no better than Zoe's. The secretary passed out as well swiftly after. Charles and his business partners laughed salaciously at the sight of the two unconscious women inside the room. They had, in fact, taken some medication to prevent them from getting drunk in advance, so the hard liquor did not affect Charles and his friends. Charles dialed a number with his phone. You can come in now, Drake and Terry. Then he turned to admire Zoe's unparalleled beauty after hanging up the phone. You belong to us. Tonight, baby. The Protector Chapter 163 Drake and Terry rushed to the sixth floor impatiently after they received the news. They had been waiting. Inside the hotel lobby the entire time. The pictures of Zoe sent by Charles earlier aroused them. At that moment, Levi and Chloe reached the Grand Imperial Hotel. He saw the familiar figures of Terry. And Drake immediately. What are they doing here? Levi and Chloe chased after them curiously. The two foreigners entered a private room hastily when they arrived on the sixth floor. Something's wrong. Levi came to a halt in front of the door. So, this woman is Zoe Lopez? She's exquisite. I heard the women in Arudaya are extraordinarily charming, but I certainly did not expect to sleep with a girl as gorgeous as her so quickly. Terry and Drake sounded excited. We'll sleep with her right here, right now. Charles said firmly. Levi turned to address Chloe. Do not enter the room no matter what you hear later on. Chloe nodded subconsciously as she took in the sinister expression on Levi's face. Bam! The door to the private room was pushed open just as the people inside were about to get wild. Someone entered the room and locked the door behind him. Drake and Terry yelped when they saw Levi. That's him, brother. He's the one who beat us up. Charles narrowed his eyes at Levi. So, you're Levi Garrison? Yes. That's me. Levi understood they were targeting him because they recognized him instantaneously. Charles sneered. Very well. I'm glad you're here. You will pay the price for harming my brothers. I'll tie you up and have you bear witness as we ravage your wife tonight. He he he. All the foreigners inside the room revealed a similar lecherous smile. In their opinion, Levi had no other choice but to concede because they had the numbers. Charles and his friends closed in on Levi. Thump. Levi grabbed Charles all of a sudden and kicked him forcefully in his knees. The latter screamed bloody murder and fell onto the floor. Thump. Levi swung a forceful punch at Charles's face. Charles sprawled on the ground in agony. Do you like to drink liquor? I'll make sure all of you drink to your heart's content. There was still plenty of liquor inside the private room. Levi picked up a bottle of hard liquor and forced the contents down Drake's throat. Hmm. Drake struggled mightily, but he was pinned on the ground as Levi poured bottle after bottle of hard liquor into his mouth. Levi forced Drake's jaws together to force the vomit back into his gastrointestinal tract when he wanted to puke. Drake's stomach was visibly bloated after he was forced to drink multiple bottles of wine. He rolled on the ground in pain as he retched up blood. Terry and Charles were met with a similar fate. Levi unleashed his unprecedented wrath on the brothers that night. 
The Protector Chapter 164 They must be tired of living to dare lay a finger on Zoe. But Levi did not want to show them mercy by killing them. So he used that method to torture them instead. Levi finally exited the room with Zoe on his back after a long while. Chloe saw Levi dragging Zoe's secretary along as well. I'm afraid we can't have our dinner tonight. I'll treat you to a meal another time. Please help me send her home. Levi asked Chloe to take care of the secretary. Okay. Leave this to me. Chloe caught a glimpse of the room before she left. The gory scene was carved into her mind. The sound of the ambulance pierced the night shortly after Levi left the venue. Charles and the others were sent to the hospital to receive treatment. They were diagnosed with gastrointestinal bleeding, severe burning of the throat mucosa, and impairment of internal organs due to excessive drinking. Everyone was puzzled by the amount of liquor they drank to lead to such a disastrous outcome. Zoe did not sober up until midnight. She breathed a sigh of relief when she saw Levi beside her. Zoe was infuriated to learn the truth. Levi grew maced. Charles and his brothers had invoked my fury. I have shown them mercy by allowing them to live. Zoe added warily, you did not kill them, did you? Don't worry. I merely taught them a brief lesson. The next day, someone knocked on the door early in the morning. Harry, Aaron and the other members of the Lopez family were at the door. How can you be sleeping at a time like this? Something bad happened. Harry chided. What happened? Zoe was startled. This is all thanks to what you and Levi did last night. Harry glared at her. Levi tortured Charles and his business partners last night, causing them to suffer grave internal injuries. Oh? Really? Zoe's face turned paper white. This is the brief lesson Levi mentioned. You had to offend powerful men like them out of all the people in this world. Harry pointed at Zoe. Now you've made a mess. The Imperial Meadows and the Lopez family's business are all ruined. What happened exactly, Grandpa? Zoe asked anxiously. Don't you know? Fick Group is a member of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. They. Chairman of Fick Group's board of directors, Alaric Taylor, announced his desire to take revenge on us. They cut off all monetary supplies, connections, and business partners related to the Lopez family. Your. West City Ecological Park project will be the next to suffer. Harry explained. Zoe received a phone call swiftly after as they predicted. One of the investors of the West City Ecological Park, Feliciano Hayes, had withdrawn his capital. Another phone call followed. This time, it was Roberto Norris calling to inform her of the same thing. Soon, all of the investors had pulled out from the project. Zoe's face turned ashen. Damn it. It's over. I'm doomed. The West City Ecological Park project is ruined now that they've withdrawn their investments. I will have to pay a large amount of compensation too. Not to mention this huge trouble related to Fick Group. Tears flowed down her cheeks uncontrollably. Why do I have to suffer the consequences when Charles and the others intended to defile me in the first place? They are people from the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. This is all because of Levi. Garrison. Where is he? Everyone was looking for Levi because he was the culprit. Do you know what you've done, Levi Garrison? Harry wanted so badly to slap him. The Protector Chapter 165 Levi heard the commotion while he was brushing his teeth, but he responded carefreely, Don't worry. There's nothing to be afraid of. What? The Lopez family's businesses are collapsing. Even your wife's company is affected. Harry. Yelled angrily. You started this mess. So, what do you think we should do now? Henry asked coldly. It'll be all right. This matter will resolve by itself, Levi replied nonchalantly. Fine. 
That's all right. We have a way of resolving our problem. Harry left furiously with his family. Aaron looked at his son-in-law helplessly. He thought Levi was impressive when he dealt with the foreigners two days ago, but Levi disappointed him again. Rescuing Zoe was the right thing to do, but he did not need to go to such lengths to teach them a lesson. Now, he caused trouble for everyone. Because of his reckless actions. Zoe defended Levi when Caitlin began to criticize Levi. Don't blame him for what happened. This is all because of my careless mistake. There's no use arguing at this point. Aaron's plan to do a property survey for a new house was ruined. There's no money to buy a house. Now, not to mention the possibility of having to compensate others. Zoe was as a state of agitation. I'll figure out a way. Levi, on the other hand, was unfazed. The financial department manager contacted Zoe shortly after. He told her Harry Lopez had withdrawn 100 million from the company's account. That sum was the compensation fee paid by the Rogers family because of the psychological trauma they had inflicted on Zoe and her family. Father is behaving outrageously. The Rogers family gave Zoe the money. Who gave him the right to take the money from her? Aaron was mad. Zoe and Caitlin were filled with grievances. Aaron took the initiative to question his father. Levi dragged us into this mess, so he should bear the responsibility. It's not wrong for me to take this money from your family since he is your son-in-law, Harry retorted. Aaron clenched his fists. That's unreasonable, father. Moreover, you're committing embezzlement by taking the money away in private. You're going against the law. Harry snorted coldly. Fine by me. Why don't you call the cops on me? I, Aaron fell silent. I can't do that. Moreover, father is one of the directors in Imperial Meadows' board of management. The chances of winning an embezzlement lawsuit against him are slim. Harry added with a sneer, have you forgotten about your crime of stealing the documents previously? Your life will be ruined if I turn you in by showing the evidence to the police. I. Anyway, what you're doing is wrong, father. Aaron hung up the call furiously. The Lopez family resolved their family crisis effortlessly after receiving the 100 million sum. They even profited from their selfish action. But Zoe's company paid the price in return. Caitlin lamented, what can we do? They've always been this way. We are used to being mistreated by them. They'll seize the money sooner or later anyway. Aaron and Caitlin had been victims of familial betrayals on multiple occasions. The Lopez family would butter them up to gain benefits whenever they were doing good. They persuaded Aaron and his family to share their fortune by using the moral obligations of being part of the Lopez family. But, whenever Aaron and his family faced troubles, none of their so-called family would show up to lend them a helping hand. The other members of the Lopez family would only think of ways to worsen their predicaments and maximize their own profits. Aaron and Caitlin's sentiment of treating the Lopez family with sincerity was clearly not reciprocated. Levi was done freshening up at that time. He poured a cup of warm milk while he questioned Zoe. Did all of the investors pull out from the project? The Protector Chapter 166 Zoe nodded. Yes. I suppose they'll be asking for compensation too. Levi sipped from his glass and said with a smile, that's all right. They'll regret their decisions soon. What do you mean? Zoe was puzzled. Be patient. Someone will invest in that project very soon, Levi comforted her. Do you have a plan in your mind? Zoe looked at Levi curiously. Don't worry. This matter will be resolved after today, Levi assured Zoe and her parents calmly. But they were not convinced by Levi's words because they were up against the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Everyone involved in the business world in Northampton was well aware of the Northampton 
Chamber of Commerce's influence. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce was controlled by the four ultra-wealthy families in the cities. Under the management of eight council members, the chairman of FIC Group's board of directors, Alaric Taylor, was one of the council members. Alaric wanted to seek revenge on Zoe and her family because of what happened to Charles. All the investors for Zoe's project withdrew their capital because of a single command from him. The Northampton Chamber of Commerce was a formidable organization as they could easily sever all connections related to the Lopez family's businesses. The news of Levi's violent acts spread like wildfire in Northampton that day. They demanded a large amount of compensation and prevented anyone from investing in Zoe's project. A lot of companies were interested in the West City Ecological Park project initially because of its promising prospect. The potential investors immediately erased the thought in their minds because of that warning from the Chamber of Commerce. Zoe was left helpless and clueless as to how she should salvage the situation while being ostracized by the entire industry. But the bad news did not end there. Zoe's employees handed their resignation letters one after another. Even the secretary involved in the incident last night quitted her job. The secretary also made an official statement. She told the public that Charles and his business partners did not step a toe out of the line. They were having an ordinary dinner banquet when she witnessed Levi entering the room and tormenting everyone mercilessly. Boom! Zoe's mind went blank upon receiving the news. Someone must have bribed her. She suddenly became their witness against Levi. Susie passed out last night. Charles and his friends would have defiled her if Levi did not show up. Levi rescued her but she betrayed us. I nourished a viper in my bosom. Zoe could not fathom Susie's abrupt change in loyalty. I picked her out personally among all the fresh graduates, so I certainly did not expect her to do this. I can understand the other employees' decisions to leave, but Susie. Zoe sat in her office gloomily as unprecedented desperation washed over her. The door to her office was pushed open after some time. A few men clad in suits entered the room. Allow me to introduce myself, Ms. Lopez. I am Baker McKenzie from Bots and Ellis LLP. We are hired by Mrs. Dickens to represent her son, Mr. Charles Dickens, in this lawsuit. We came here to inform you about the compensation amount you have to pay our client due to the injuries your husband. Mr. Levi Garrison, inflicted on our client. The sum is 800 million. Please take a look. Baker handed. Zoe a piece of paper. Zoe's face turned pale after she schemed through the document. We will press charges against you and your husband if you do not wish to settle this matter in private. We have a large amount of evidence, including surveillance footage, witnesses from the hotel's waiters. The official statement from Ms. Susie Bones, and eight other victims in this incident. Let me remind you. This lawsuit is highly advantageous to us. Please take a look at this injury report too. Do you think you have the liberty to choose, Ms. Lopez? The Protector Chapter 167 Botts and Ellis LLP was a law firm established by Zoe's ex-classmate, Arnold Botts. That firm was one of the most prestigious firms in Northampton. They won almost all the cases they accepted. Zoe was devastated. She was frightened when she saw the injury report. I can't imagine the things Levi must have done to cause so much damage. But I can certainly picture the troubles we have to face. Soon, we will have a tough time ahead because of this injury report alone. Although Charles and his business partners wronged me in the first place, I do not have any evidence that prove their vile acts. Also, allow me to inform you this, Ms. Lopez, I am the best lawyer in my firm. Ever since they hired me at Bots and Ellis LLP, the firm had never lost a single case. So trust me, this lawsuit will not be an exception. 
You should think wisely now. Baker sneered. Baker's assistant added, I heard your husband, Levi Garrison, was released from prison recently. With his record, it is not so difficult to place him behind the bars again. The group of lawyers manipulated the situation to their advantage with the sole purpose of driving Zoe into a corner. All right then, we will be waiting for your reply, Ms. Lopez. Consider your options well. Baker and the others left afterward. Zoe was left alone inside her office. Tears welled up in her eyes as she thought to herself, perhaps I can seek help from Arnold. He pursued me in the past, but I rejected him. Zoe spent a lot of effort to obtain Arnold Botts's number. Then she called him. Oh? Why are you contacting me, Zoe? Arnold said in a surprised tone. Zoe forced a smile. Hello, Arnold. I'll cut to the chase. I'm facing some difficulties. Yes, I know. You're talking about the incident involving Levi Garrison and Charles Dickens from FIC. Group, am I right? Yes, that's right. Can you help me with this lawsuit? We can discuss the price to fit your liking, Zoe. Pleaded with sincerity. Arnold grinned. I am aware of this lawsuit because the best lawyer in my firm accepted the case. I'll be frank you'll have a difficult time trying to win against him for this case. Let me offer you a piece of my mind, Zoe. You should ditch Levi while you can. He's just a useless man now. Let him return to the jail. Then, you can remarry someone better. Everyone from our high school is doing far better than Levi Garrison. Take me for an example. My law firm, Bots and Ellis LLP, has been flourishing for the past ten years. There are a lot of outstanding lawyers working for me currently, Arnold persuaded. Zoe. Zoe countered immediately, Levi did not hurt them on purpose. Charles and his friends tried to take advantage of me after getting me drunk. Levi was merely rescuing me. That's impossible. I have been friends with Mr. Dickens for a long time now. He's a gentleman, as far as I'm concerned. He will never do such things. His friends are as noble as him. Do you have any evidence to back your words? Arnold said. You? Zoe did not expect Arnold to be in cahoots with Charles and his gang. Don't worry, Zoe. I will make sure Baker does a splendid job this time and push for Levi to be sentenced to life imprisonment. You will have the opportunity to ditch him soon. Arnold laughed. Wickedly. You don't have to worry about my matters. Moreover, you are not qualified to judge my husband's character. Zoe hung up the phone angrily. Inside the office of Bots and Ellis LLP's building, Arnold crossed his feet on the table while wearing a suit. He was sipping casually on a cup of coffee. The Protector Chapter 168 He had accepted this case immediately and devised a plan for Alaric Taylor when he heard Zoe was involved in this matter. Arnold ordered his subordinate, inform Mr. Taylor to prohibit all the law firms in Northampton from accepting Zoe's case using his connections. His assistant nodded. Yes, sir. All the law firms in Northampton soon received the news, no one is allowed to accept Zoe Lopez's case. Zoe, on the other hand, was oblivious as she wasted all her time contacting every law firm she could to fight for her lawsuit but every firm turned her down. Zoe quickly realized something was wrong after receiving the continuous rejections. Someone is pushing me into the depth of despair. They want to send Levi into prison and ruin everything I have. Zoe dialed Levi's number without wasting another second. Levi was astounded by the turn of events when he arrived at Zoe's office. I did not expect this to happen. Perhaps I've underestimated the Chamber of Commerce's authority. Well, Arnold Botts's 
Involvement is out of my initial consideration too. We are left with two choices. We can either pay the sum of 800 million or proceed with the lawsuit. But I contacted all the law firms I could, and all of them refused to represent us, Zoe sobbed. You don't have to think about the lawsuit anymore. They have planned everything, down to cutting off. All your resources and connections. But believe me, this is not the extent of their plans. Levi's smile. Widened. The legal team from FIC Group arrived shortly after as Levi had predicted. They requested Zoe to compensate them with a sum of 300 million for Charles Dickens's injuries and the delay of the West City Ecological Park's progress. I did breach the agreement. And it is clearly written on the agreement that I have to compensate them. With ten times the amount they invested. Before Zoe had time to catch her breath, Alaric sent his men. From the Northampton Chamber of Commerce to visit Zoe. They offered to purchase Zoe's company for 300 million, including the West City Ecological Park. Project. Boom. Zoe was flabbergasted. They planned everything. They are pushing me into the traps they laid out for. Me, one after the other. I'll be left with nothing by the time this incident comes to an end. Alaric offered. To buy out my company for 300 million. Then I'll have no other choice but to pay FIC Group with the lump sum for breaching the contract. They will take control of all my assets, worth up to a billion, in a breeze. My assets will depreciate further if I do not agree now since I do not have sufficient cash flow to operate my business at this point. 300 million is already considered a great deal. Alaric and Arnold were proud of this scheme they devised because they would be able to rob Zoe's possessions while pushing Levi into jail simultaneously. Alaric's subordinate said with a smile, Our offer coincides with the amount you have to pay Fick. Group for breaching the contract. If you agree to our proposal, let's handle the procedures right away. Zoe hesitated. I will have to pay this 300 million sum. I really do not have any other choice. Should I just accept this offer? Hesitate no more, Ms. Lopez. Your asset may depreciate to 200 million tomorrow, that person urged. Zoe to agree to his offer. Levi suddenly voiced out at that moment. 300 million? That's not a problem. Everyone was astounded by Levi's statement. Zoe was not an exception. 300 million is not a problem? He's talking big again. Don't worry. I can afford 3 billion, not to mention 300 million. Let's just wait until tomorrow before we decide anything. The Protector Chapter 169 Zoe looked at Levi incredulously. Are you really capable of acquiring the money? Did I say that I'd pay them? Why should we do that? We're not at fault in this incident. Levi smiled. But they have all the evidence. We have no other choice but to concede. Zoe rubbed her temples. All you have to do now is to proceed with your work as usual. You can approve the resignations of your employees, but you need to make a statement in advance. Tell them that anyone who quits their job now will not be accepted in Imperial Meadows from now on. The employees who stay with the company through this crisis will receive an increased salary and more benefits, Levi told Zoe what to do. But we have no money to fund our operations now. Moreover, no one will dare to invest in my company after that official warning given by the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, Zoe said. With uncertainty. Just do as I say. Someone will invest in your company today, Levi assured her. Zoe placed her faith in Levi and heeded his advice. She made the announcement as Levi suggested. Many of her employees were enraged to receive the notice. There's no need for me to return to this rubbish company anyway. That's right. Imperial Meadows is going bankrupt soon. What's the point of acting tough now? Zoe merely endured the insults in silent. At that moment, 
a Maybach stopped in front of Imperial Meadows's building. A few men got out of the car. The man leading the group was dressed in a suit and wearing a pair of sunglasses. That man was none other than Kieran. Today, he was playing the role of a company's president instead of a military instructor. Hello, please inform Ms. Lopez that Levi Group's president, Mr. Rhodes, is here to meet her. They Receptionist immediately contacted Zoe after Kieran's assistant spoke to her. Zoe came to the lobby to welcome Kieran in person afterward. Kieran was a skilled fighter and an experienced instructor, but he wasn't familiar with business talks. Hence, he addressed Zoe in a straightforward manner, I am would like to invest in an ongoing project. Under your company, Ms. Lopez. I'll provide you a 300 million capital for now. Let's sign the contract. Now if you agree to my offer. His assistant handed the contract to Zoe after Kieran waved his hand. Zoe was shocked after she glanced through the agreement. This is not a collaboration. He might as well just give me the money. Kieran added, we have an ongoing medical related project as well. I know your company has expertise in this field so we will let you handle this project too, Ms. Lopez. The assistant handed Zoe another document. That project would only provide Zoe's company with a 100 million investment, but that was mainly due to Imperial Meadows's limited capacity. Will you agree to my offer, Ms. Lopez? Kieran inquired. Of course. Thank you so much, Mr. Rhodes. Zoe expressed her gratitude agitatedly. Then, she gazed at Kieran curiously. If you do not mind me asking, Mr. Rhodes, why are you choosing to invest in my company when we're in a tight spot? I have to ask because I cannot think of a valid reason myself. Kieran answered, Firstly, I have faith in your company's prospect because your business is in demand. The second reason is that I am not afraid of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. What kind of relationship do you share with Levi Garrison, Mr. Rhodes? Zoe questioned. The words slipped out of Kieran's mouth subconsciously. He's my... He's someone with great... Potential, in my opinion. Levi Group's advancement in the medical field was unparalleled in the past. I... Acquired Levi Group and the Garrison family's businesses because I do not want this technology to go... To waste. I came here to invest in your company partly because of this reason too. The Protector Chapter 170 Okay. I understand now. The investment made by the mysterious Mr. Rhodes spread quickly throughout the entire North. Hampton The Northampton Chamber of Commerce was one of the few to take particular interest in that news. Alaric Taylor, an obese man, was puffing on his cigar inside his office. Who is this Neil Rhodes? Why? Have I never heard of him? Alaric's assistant replied. We've investigated his background. There is limited information on him. I don't know what's wrong with the Rogers family. Why did they give him Levi Group and Garrison? Group all of a sudden? Check out the relationship between Neil Rhodes and the Rogers family, Alaric. Ordered. Then? he put on a mischievous smile. It doesn't matter to me even if you obtained that. Investment from Levi Group, Zoe Lopez. You cannot save Levi Garrison anyway. This is the repercussion you must face for harming my godson. No one expected Charles Dickens to be Alaric's godson. Zoe's company was finally getting back on track after she received the investment. But I must pay the Penalty for breaching the contract. Otherwise, Levi will face time in jail. I'm still worried about this. Because there's no way I can collect so much money in this short period of time. Meanwhile, Levi was hanging out with Azure Dragon and the others. Azure Dragon laughed out loud when he was informed of the ongoing situation. Ha ha ha. What a joke. Is there actually someone who has the guts to send you into prison at this time and age? Levi shared his thoughts while smoking a cigarette, 
I did not expect these foreigners to have the support of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. What are you going to do next, sir? Azure Dragon asked. Firstly, I'll visit those people who committed perjury. Then, I'll deal with the lawyers. The last thing to do is to show the necessary evidence to deport those foreigners, Levi elaborated. Evidence? But there is no evidence as far as I'm concerned. Azure Dragon was astounded. However, he quickly gained revelation at the sight of Levi's sly smile. Levi Garrison was a man with a plan. He was not only a formidable enemy on the battlefield with unrivaled combat skills, that man was also a brilliant tactician. Dealing with that incident was a piece of cake to him. He had deliberately left traces behind when dealing with Charles and the others last night. Phoenix took up the responsibility to look for the few waiters in the hotel who had falsified statements. As witnesses that night, Levi and Azure Dragon went to meet with Zoe's secretary, Susie. Levi had to deal with matters related to his wife in person. At that moment, youngsters were dancing to the music inside the space bar located in Northampton. Susie treated her friends to party in the bar after receiving a million in cash from Alaric that day. She booked the VIP table in the bar and even ordered the most luxurious meal they had. Susie was washing her hand with a bottle of expensive champagne when Levi arrived at the bar. He sat quietly next to Susie and chatted with her casually, Are you having fun spending the money? Alaric Taylor gave you. Susie was stunned when she heard Levi's voice. When did he appear next to me? Why are you here, Levi Garrison? And what nonsense did you spout? Susie recollected her thoughts. After a while, Levi beamed at her. I remember you were drunk as well last night. I saved you and arranged for someone to send you home. The color drained from Susie's face as she listened to him. She refuted his statement firmly. Nonsense. I wasn't drunk yesterday, nor did you save me. Go on. Please go on with your lies. Levi smiled. Susie's male friends stood up and surrounded Levi in an instant. Who the hell are you, kiddo? What's going on here? The Protector Chapter 171 Levi could not care less about the few lowly men surrounding him. He continued to stare at Susie. Is that so? But I saw with my own eyes how drunk you were. Impossible. I wasn't drunk. I attended a dinner banquet with Ms. Lopez yesterday. Then, you came in. And beat those people up. You even tortured them and warned me not to tell anyone. Susie summoned. Her courage and placed the blame on Levi unwaveringly. Oh really? Levi demanded. Susie was not afraid because she had her muscular friend's support. She shrieked angrily. Don't you? Dare pull any tricks on me, Levi Garrison. I'm telling you, you cannot escape the charges pressed. Against you. You're an ungrateful human being. Those foreigners would have raped you if I did not rescue you last. Night, Levi responded. Fear crept into Susie's heart when she was reminded of the frightening scene from yesterday. But she braced herself and said, Humph. That's not possible. Mr. Dickens is a well-known gentleman. He's polite toward all ladies. Don't go judging him with your despicable standards. She's good at telling lies. Levi took out his phone and pulled up his gallery. He then waved his phone in. Susie's face. This is the video of you in a drunken state that I took last night. I wonder who is the person touching you in this video? Oops. I believe these hands belong to Mr. Dickens. Susie was dumbfounded when she saw the video. He took a video of me. This video is proof that I falsified my statements. I'll face time in jail if I'm exposed. Susie's face turned to the shade of chalk instantaneously. Delete that video right now. She made a fruitless attempt to snatch Levi's phone. Levi Nimble. 
avoided her and got up to leave. Susie hurriedly stood up as well. She yelled furiously, Give me the phone. Why should I give you this phone? Levi asked. Give her the phone immediately. Susie's friends blocked Levi's path and ordered him in an unfriendly manner. Oh please. This is my phone, Levi said. One of the men, Clement Marrow, demanded harshly, I order you to hand the phone over right now. Truth be told, the person in charge of this bar is my brother, Chopper. I guarantee you will not walk out of this place unscathed if you do not give me the phone. Her friend's presence boosted Susie's courage. You'll suffer greatly tonight if you do not delete the video, Levi Garrison. Levi ignored them. Clement reached out to snatch the phone just as Levi continued to walk ahead. Thump! Azure Dragon appeared out of nowhere and punched Clement's face. Blood splattered everywhere. Thump! Another man fell to the floor. In a matter of seconds, Susie's friends were all lying on the ground. Who the hell dares to cause trouble on my turf? A loud voice pierced the atmosphere inside the bar. A dozen men rushed toward the scene. They were thugs in charge of the security in that bar. The bar's manager had informed them about the fight, so they came in a hurry. Levi thought that voice was a little familiar. That's Chopper, who works on the construction site as a helper. He's one of Nuve's men. Chopper's face turned pale when he recognized Levi's face. So, you are the bastards causing trouble. On my turf. Chopper strode past Levi and Azure Dragon and came to a halt in front of Clement and his friends. Slap. Chopper slapped Clement forcefully across his face as the latter spat out a mouthful of blood and a few of his teeth. The Protector Chapter 172 Slap Chopper slapped another person's face. The few thugs following Chopper beat up Clement and his friends mercilessly. The manager was astounded. Why is he beating up our VIP customers tonight? How did they end up becoming the troublemakers? I am certain that they stirred up trouble in this bar. Chopper interrupted the manager before he could. Explain. Unexpectedly, Chopper shuffled toward Levi and said to him politely. I'm sorry to have bothered you. With this inconvenience. I've dealt with those idiotic punks, Mr. Garrison. Well done. Chopper was elated to receive a compliment from Levi. Susie and her friends were puzzled. That's the complete opposite of what happened. Levi waved his phone at Susie. I'll be taking my leave. Then, Levi left with Azure Dragon afterward. Susie chased after them immediately because Levi still possessed the video that could ruin her life. But by the time she arrived at the door, Levi and Azure Dragon had disappeared without a trace. Boohoo, Susie knelt on the floor as she cried her eyes out. I'll be doomed if I cannot find Levi. Garrison. I'll have no way to escape imprisonment if he turns in the video. Susie was overwhelmed by fear and regret. I cannot go to jail now. I just graduated from university. And I have a bright future ahead of me. Oh. How I wish I can turn back time. I lost sight of everything. Because of that one million offer. Meanwhile, Phoenix had completed his tasks. He tracked down all the transaction histories and call. Logs of the waiters that witnessed the event. The waiters were cowering in tears before Phoenix. Inside a luxurious villa in Northampton, Arnold Botts was puffing on a cigar while a sexy lady lay on his bed. He eyed the woman on the bed and sneered, the next person to fill that position on the bed will be you, Zoe Lopez. Many of her ex-classmates had always coveted Zoe because of her beauty, especially those who were now successful and accomplished in life. Arnold was determined to get his way because this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for him to sleep with Zoe. I'll have a taste of the woman who rejected me in the past. At that moment, someone pressed on his doorbell. Arnold put on a bathrobe and went to open the door after he cursed that person who disrupted his train. 
of thoughts. It was Levi who was standing on the other side of the door. Oh my! Look at that! Levi Garrison, the man who used to be a powerful figure in Northampton. Welcome! Arnold invited Levi into his villa instead of chasing him away. Are you here because of your lawsuit? Arnold asked. You're right. You are the owner of Bots and Ellis LLP, after all. You are the only person I can come to. At a time like this. Levi smiled. What's going on? Arnold feigned ignorance. I am here because no lawyer in the city would represent us in this lawsuit. I was hoping if you could. Enlighten me on the situation, Levi answered. Ha ha. Frankly speaking, I arranged for all this to happen. No one in this field will have the guts to. Accept your case now, Arnold blurted out the truth because he was not afraid of Levi. In his opinion. Levi was there to beg him for mercy. Oh no. It's you. Levi pretended to be in disbelief. That's right. I want to drive you and Zoe into a corner. I want both of you to be caught in a helpless and desperate situation. And here you are, coming all the way to my villa to beg me. Arnold beamed. At Levi. That means you planned everything with Alaric Taylor's help. Levi questioned him. Yes. I bribed those witnesses too. My arrangements are flawless. You will have to face death if you do. Not beg me right now, Levi Garrison. The Protector Chapter 173 Arnold Botts laughed wickedly. You're completely under my control, Levi Garrison. You're doomed. So, it is you who have been manipulating every turn of events. Levi acted as if he was furious. That's right. I agreed to accept the case without any hesitation when the Northampton Chamber of Commerce contacted me previously. I pursued Zoe in the past, but she rejected me mercilessly and even told me that I do not deserve her. But times have changed I am the person who can alter your fates now. Arnold Botts could never let go of the humiliation he experienced in his younger days. But he finally had the opportunity to toy with Zoe. I will play with her to my heart's content. You, Levi put up a scared front. Arnold moved closer to Levi and jeered at him, I am your master now, Levi Garrison. You will lose if you fight me in this lawsuit. I will see your face again behind bars. But that wasn't my fault. They tried to take advantage of Zoe and threatened me too. I was only defending myself, Levi uttered the words desperately. He <laughs> he. I am aware of that, naturally. Charles and his friends are a bunch of sex fiends. They have toyed with plenty of women over the years. They wanted to defile Zoe on purpose as a form of revenge against you. It was also their intention to tie you up and let you witness the entire process. But what can you do even if you know all about the truth now? You don't have any evidence against us. Arnold challenged Levi smugly. Then what should I do, old friend? Can you please help me? Levi faked a plea. Arnold put on a cunning smile. That's very simple. Pay me two hundred million and leave Zoe under my care. For one week. This is not too much to ask, am I right? Two hundred million should not be a problem now that someone has invested in her company. I'm offering you a fair deal now. Let your wife please me for one. We can exchange for your safety. Arnold patted Levi's shoulder. Think wisely, Levi. You're doomed. If you cannot fulfill these two conditions, I guarantee you will be sentenced to life imprisonment. You can never escape that place for the rest of your life. Levi laughed after Arnold was done threatening him. He sat on the sofa and crossed his legs while puffing on a special cigarette from the army. His demeanor had changed completely from when he was begging Arnold Botts moments ago. Arnold stared at Levi incredulously. He's supposed to be begging me. 
why is he acting like the boss? Now? What are you doing, Levi Garrison? Are you tired of living? Arnold screamed. Footsteps reverberated inside the room all of a sudden. Arnold assumed the sound was made by the woman he slept with earlier, so he said harshly. Didn't I? Tell you not to come out here. I'm not allowed to come out here. Arnold turned his head around immediately when he heard the voice of a man instead. Then, he saw Azure Dragon walking slowly in his direction with a camera in his hand. Who are you? What are you doing here? Azure Dragon strode up to Levi while disregarding Arnold. I've captured the whole process, sir. Arnold tensed up when he saw the camera. He asked frightfully, you recorded the whole conversation. Earlier. Clarity washed over Arnold instantaneously. Levi put up a pretense by begging me for mercy. He set a trap for me to spill the truth on my own accord. I did not expect him to do this. Levi Garrison is just a nobody, in my opinion. Perhaps I've underestimated him. Levi checked the footage and said with a smile, You're right. I wanted to record just the voices with a recorder. But on second thought, filming the entire process will be more convincing. The Protector Chapter 174 Levi's confidence unsettled Arnold. I'll be a goner if this footage is exposed to the public. My law firm will collapse, so will my life. Arnold was drenched in a cold sweat at that moment. His anxiety was much more intense than Susie's. Susie's concern was merely the fear of imprisonment while Arnold would lose everything, including his wealth, career, and life. Arnold stared at Levi hatefully, unwilling to give up without a fight. Hand me the footage now. Then. We can discuss the terms like civilized people. Otherwise, you will suffer miserably. Are you threatening me? Levi grinned at him. Arnold grasped the situation in a heartbeat. Levi Garrison is a formidable man. He would not think of doing this if he's just an average Joe as I thought. Threatening him is futile. Arnold suppressed his undulating emotions. He tried to negotiate with Levi, just tell me what you want. Levi shook his head. I don't want anything. No, wait. I will assist you in this lawsuit if you give me the footage. I can guarantee your victory, and you will receive a handsome amount of compensation too. Arnold suggested. Levi's only wish at this moment should be to win this lawsuit and free himself from all the charges pressed against him. Levi's lips curled into a pensive smile. Why would I need a rubbish like you to help me with the lawsuit? Levi got up to leave after he spoke. You can't leave now. Let's discuss the terms as you wish. Arnold blocked Levi from moving. Forward. I can promise you anything as long as you delete the video. Arnold was on the verge of tears. Azure Dragon lifted Arnold and tossed him on the sofa. Arnold wailed and shrieked, but he could not do a thing as Levi slowly disappeared from his vision. Outside the villa, Phoenix met up with Levi. He handed him some documents. Here's the transaction. History and call log between Arnold Botts and Alaric Taylor, sir. Well done. We've gathered all the evidence we need. Place this on Xavier Fields's working desk. Phoenix. He will go through these documents tomorrow. Levi puffed on his cigarette and disappeared into the night. That was destined to be a long and unbearable night for Zoe and Aaron because their fates would be determined at sunrise. That night was not pleasant for the few waiters who committed perjury too. At eight o'clock in the morning, a series of police sirens were heard as police cars surrounded the Grand. Imperial Hotel. A dozen policemen got out of the car and rushed into the hotel. Then, they swiftly brought the waiters. Away. Inside her apartment, Susie was distressed by the unexpected turn of events. Don't worry, Susie. You have the support of Arnold Botts and the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. 
Levi Garrison will not escape the terrible fate waiting for him with these impressive forces. Going against him. Don't concern yourself with the video. You only have to stick firmly with your statement that Levi edited the video, her friends comforted her. Susie felt a little better after listening to her friends. That's right. Levi is nothing compared to the people supporting me. However, with that thought in her mind, the sound of sirens reverberated through the entire apartment. Susie and her friends ran to the windows to check out the situation. They saw a police car parked below the apartment. Susie passed out in fear. But she was taken away by the policeman anyway. On the other end, Arnold went to Alaric Taylor's Alaric group early in the morning. He was actually Alaric's godson as well. Inside the chairman's office, Arnold was begging Alaric to help him. You must save me, Godfather. Levi Garrison has the evidence that could ruin my life. Arnold's face was paper white. Alaric chided while smoking his cigar, how can you introduce yourself to others as a lawyer when you are such a coward? The Protector Chapter 175 Arnold's body shuddered as he explained, that's not it, Godfather. Levi is a capable man. Not only did he tricked me into revealing all the truth, but he also filmed the entire conversation. I just received news of the few waiters and Zoe's secretary's arrests for committing perjury. I will be his next target. You have to save me, please. Arnold begged Alaric. Alaric stood before the French windows overlooking the city of Northampton. He said after taking a puff of his cigar, who has the guts to harm my godson? Don't worry about this, Arnold. Nothing will happen to you. The vice captain of the patrol squad needs to pay his respects to me as well. Do you know how much I have contributed to the city's advancement every year? Alaric was unfazed. Not only am I one of the council members of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce, but I am also the owner of Alaric Group a business worth up to eight billion. What do I have? To fear? But the next second, a series of police sirens blared in front of the Alaric Group's building. The sound filled every corner of the skyscraper. The color drained from Alaric's face when he saw the police cars parked near the entrance of the building. Arnold was already shivering in terror. They are here to capture me. Alaric continued to puff on his cigar. His brows were knitted together tightly, but he reassured his Godson, don't worry, Arnold. No one will dare lay a finger on you as long as I am here. A few policemen barged into Alaric's office. They displayed Arnold's arrest warrant immediately. Arnold was so frightened, he was soaked in a cold sweat. Alaric raised his voice, try and take him away if you have the courage to do so. He's not the only person we are taking away. You are following us as well. A voice was heard. Suddenly. Xavier Fields showed himself a split second later. In his hands was another arrest warrant to. Detain Alaric. Captain Fields. Alaric was surprised to see Xavier Fields. Xavier Fields knew Alaric was a tricky man to handle, so he had to deal with him in person. Alaric. Taylor and Arnold Botts, we have solid evidence to prove your crimes. Please cooperate with us to undergo the investigation. Otherwise, we will take you by force. Four policemen stepped forward and arrested them after Xavier waved his hand. Alaric did not expect himself to be targeted. I am the council member of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Everyone else shared Alaric's sentiment because no one foresaw the arrest of a council member of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. The evidence against them was indeed irrefutable, but both Alaric and Arnold were astounded to see the transaction histories and call logs. We purposefully encrypted this information. So why is it here? Arnold knew the precautionary measures he had to take as he was a lawyer. The police and 
investigators shouldn't have been able to crack the security encryption. But they did not know Phoenix. Was one of the best hackers in the world. He dealt with the issue effortlessly. With that, Alaric Taylor and Arnold Botts were captured. Charges were pressed against Charles and his friends who were staying inside the hospital. All of them would either be placed behind bars or deported upon their recovery. This news spread like wildfire throughout Northampton. Justice had prevailed. However, Alaric Taylor's arrest shocked the public the most. The members of the Chamber of Commerce were astounded by that matter. However, they had no other choice but to concede because Xavier Fields was the man to take Alaric into custody. Inside Zoe's office, two people were wrapped in a tight embrace. So, you've predicted these two. Happen. You're so smart to deliberately leave evidence at the scene. No wonder you were so calm the whole time. Zoe's eyes shone as she spoke to Levi. Levi smiled. They are too young to be competing with me. The Protector Chapter 176 Levi Group contacted Zoe's company after the crisis was resolved. They wanted to contribute an additional 200 million investment to expand Zoe's business. Zoe accepted the offer without a second thought. In the afternoon, Zoe made another announcement. Any employee who weathered the crisis with us will receive a higher salary and more benefits from now on. She even promoted a few of her employees because the majority of the workers had quitted. The announcement made a huge impact on the business world in Northampton. Imperial Meadows was also hiring a large number of new employees as they needed to expand their business. A massive crowd of applicants gathered in front of the company's entrance. At the recruitment venue, a middle-aged obese man in a suit tossed his resume on the table. I was the head of the legal department in Imperial Meadows, Elmer Reed. Register my name immediately. Because I'm coming back to work now. But the recruiter sneered. Elmer Reed, you say? You're on the Imperial Meadows's recruitment. Blacklist. You will never be employed by this company again for the rest of your life. Who are you? How dare you reject my application? Bring the head of the HR department here right. Now. Elmer roared. He was not pleased to be stopped by a few lowly employees at the entrance of the company. He's right. We used to be Imperial Meadows's employees. So why aren't you letting us in? We worked in this company for years. Imperial Meadows cannot operate without us. Not only do we want to rejoin the company, we demand to receive the extra benefits too. The crowd yelled and screamed at the recruiters, following Elmer Reed's lead. They were the employees who resigned amidst Imperial Meadows's crisis. They returned to the company after they heard about Zoe's announcement. But all of them were infuriated after they learned that their names were registered on the blacklist. Elmer Reed said angrily, give us a proper explanation. We can sue you for inflicting psychological trauma on us and demand compensation. Zoe appeared at that moment. I warned you of the consequences of leaving the company previously. All of you are on Imperial Meadows's blacklist now. The ex-employees cowered when they saw Zoe. Elmer said with a smile, we have reflected on our mistakes now, Ms. Lopez. Please give us another chance. That's right. We are terribly sorry. Please give us another opportunity. The others pleaded as well. I already gave you a chance, Zoe responded unmercifully. The employees who stayed with Imperial Meadows before were grateful for their decisions. We would be facing the same situation as them if we followed them previously. Zoe was adamant. Anyone who's on the blacklist will never be accepted in Imperial Meadows. Fine. Do not blame us in that case, Zoe Lopez. We'll stay here to protest until you return the jobs to us. Elmer Reed retorted. All the other ex-employees did as Elmer said. They blocked the company's entrance to prevent anyone from entering. 
let's see who has got more time to waste now. Elmer added. I will also sue you for creating this. Unreasonable rule and infringing our basic human right to apply for a job. I will demand a large amount. Of compensation due to this horrible psychological trauma you have inflicted on us. Elmer Reed is adept at manipulating the law to his advantage. More importantly, we cannot operate as usual if they continue to protest here. Zoe saw Levi just as she was troubled by the predicament. A large group of scary men followed behind Levi. Who dares to stir up trouble in front of the Imperial Meadows's building? Levi shouted. The Protector Chapter 177 That's me. Do you have a problem with that? Elmer accepted the challenge. Chopper and his men surged forward with a wave of Levi's hand. They quickly surrounded Elmer. Chopper patted Elmer's cheek tauntingly. What's going on? Are you causing a ruckus? Chopper asked with a grin. Elmer was scared out of his wits when he saw the menacing appearance of the thugs. The scars and tattoos covering Chopper's skin did not help ease his anxiety. Chopper's subordinates took care of the other employees who followed Elmer's lead. But Elmer summoned his courage and confronted Zoe, How dare you hire these thugs to threaten me? I will sue you. You're dead. Zoe jeered at him, Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know them. Chopper agreed with her. That's right. We don't know one another. I am here to settle this dispute. Because I do not like the way you are causing trouble here. Do you have a problem with that? Everyone supported Chopper, that's right. We don't like how you are bullying the others. We will. Interfere in this matter regardless of what you say. You, I know they are acquainted with each other, but I do not have any proof. What do you want? I am a lawyer, so I am not afraid of you. Elmer spoke with an unconvincing tone. Chopper patted his face again. We don't want anything. Though I do know your daughter is a student. At Northampton Primary School, and your wife is working at Sunshine Hypermarket. What? Elmer was taken aback by Chopper's words. He's blatantly threatening me. But I can't say or do anything because of how he phrased his sentence. This is my bad. I will not repeat my mistake in the future. Elmer surrendered. Don't you know that you should apologize after you make a mistake? Chopper sneered. Elmer stood in front of Zoe and apologized, We are terribly sorry. Ms. Lopez. We will not cause you any more trouble. Everyone admitted their mistakes as well. They regretted their decisions. We could have enjoyed these benefits if we did not submit our resignation letters in the past. Members of the Lopez family were filled with regrets as well. What? Levi Group invested a total of 600 million? Imperial Meadows will be expanding its business. Harry Lopez was astonished. Fabian nodded. Yes. They have sufficient capital to expand their business after setting aside the money. Needed for the West City Ecological Park project. Imperial Meadows will be on PAR with Lopez Group. Soon. What? Harry Lopez was in utter disbelief. I thought I was so smart to take away that 100 million, but... The tables have turned. We've messed up our relationship with Zoe at this point. Perhaps it is time we try to reconcile with Zoe. Levi was fully occupied by the matters related to Levi Group in the past few days. He decided to rename the company as Morris Group to pay respect to Morris Atkinson as well as to announce his rivalry with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Zoe's grandmother's birthday banquet was around the corner. Aaron and Caitlin were putting a lot of effort into preparing the birthday presents. Caitlin purchased a jade statue for her mother because her mother was a collector of those antiques. Aaron, on the other hand, spent $300,000 on a famous painting. Zoe bought a set of expensive supplements for her grandmother. Aaron was satisfied with the presents they had prepared for Caitlin's mother. He reminded Levi, you 
should come up with something too, Levi. This will be your first time meeting with your grandmother-in-law. Remember to buy an expensive gift. Get the money from Zoe if you have to. Caitlin glared at Aaron before turning to look at Levi. The price is not the priority. It is more important for you to put thought into the gift. The Protector Chapter 178 You're right. The Black family is almost as influential as the Garrison family. They might even think of the expensive gifts as cheap objects, Aaron said. I should prepare a thoughtful present since this woman is Zoe's grandmother. Father, mother, does. Grandmother have any special hobbies or quirks? Levi asked. I'm not sure about her hobbies, but she does have a bad habit, Caitlin answered. She likes to drink. And smoke. My mother never listens to our advice. Levi smiled. Then I will prepare alcohol and cigarettes for her. What? Don't mess around, Levi. My siblings will scold me if you prepare those items as my mother's birthday present. Moreover, with my mother's status, she's not the type of person to just indulge in any alcohol and cigarettes. So you can erase that thought from your mind, Caitlin warned him. It's better for you to go empty-handed than adding to the trouble, Aaron added. All right then. But I will prepare a present for her. And this will be something grandmother has never seen because no one can buy this with money. The next day, everyone departed for the Black family house. Abigail tagged along with Levi and the others. Although Zoe was rich, the money was placed inside the company's account. Aaron did not have sufficient time to purchase a luxurious car either. Hence, they took the train to their destination. It was. After all, only a 40-minute ride. Aaron and Caitlin were reassured after they saw Levi leaving the house without a present. They were afraid of Levi's unpredictability and his tendency to worsen every situation. Forty minutes later, they arrived at the South City train station. Aaron and Caitlin walked in front with excitement, followed by Zoe and Abigail. Levi trailed behind them, carrying all their belongings. South City was hosting a national economy forum at that time, so the city council had enhanced the security in every train station and airport. A security check was placed at every train station exit. Beep beep beep. The security alarm was triggered when Levi passed through the gates. Chaos broke out at the exit immediately. Everyone scrambled to hide in the corners. The security Guards were invigorated as the piercing sound of the alarm had startled them. The security teams assigned nearby the train station hurried over upon sensing the commotion. Levi stood at the exit, not knowing what he should do as the alarm would not stop beeping. Everyone stared at Levi apprehensively. Aaron and his family were dumbfounded as well. Don't move. Raise your hands. The guards loaded their guns and aimed the weapons at Levi. Levi was not carrying anything because all their belongings had to pass through the security check. As a result, everyone was under the impression that Levi had hidden a dangerous object on his body. The security team was especially tense due to the ongoing event in the city. Please evacuate immediately. Everyone left the scene under the security team's arrangements. Including Zoe and her family. Levi was left alone at the security gate after a short while. What are you hiding? Reveal the objects immediately. The security guard shouted nervously. Levi smiled. I'm not carrying anything else on me. That's not possible. Why else was the alarm triggered? We can show you leniency if you hand over. The object on your own accord right now. The guard persuaded Levi. There's nothing to hand over, honestly, Levi answered carefreely. He walked through the security gate calmly while reaching into his pockets slowly. Do not move. Stand up straight and raise your hands. We will shoot you if you do not comply. Everyone yelled frantically as they did not know what Levi was planning to do. But Levi did not heed their warning. 
he continued to do as he pleased. The Protector Chapter 179 The security guards were drenched in sweat under the stressful environment. Everyone could feel their hearts pounding heavily against their chest as that was the most challenging situation they had ever faced. They stared at Levi unblinkingly while tightening the grip on their guns with trembling hands. They had orders to shoot Levi on the spot if he took out anything deemed to be dangerous from his pockets. Swish Levi removed the item from his pocket at that crucial moment. Phew. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief when they saw the object. It's just a cigarette. Levi placed the cigarette between his lips and said with a smile. What's with the tensed atmosphere? I am not carrying anything dangerous on me. Can I borrow a lighter, bro? The leader of the security team, Perry Chapman, strode up to Levi and lit his cigarette. At the same time, he searched Levi's body and discovered nothing. Perry waved his hand. Two other female guards shuffled forward and searched Levi's body again. They Result was the same. Then, one of the female guards scanned Levi's body with a handheld metal detector. Beep beep beep. The alarm on the metal detector rang again. Perry immediately pointed his gun at Levi. The other guards behaved similarly. The atmosphere turned. As heavy as before. The female guard continued to scan Levi's body. The metal detector was triggered when it hovered. Over his abdomen, chest, back, waist, knees, and other parts of his body. She ordered Levi with a frown. Please remove your coat, sir. Levi complied because that was the standard procedure. Nothing was wrong with Levi's coat after the female guard scanned his outerwear. But the metal detector beeped again when she scanned Levi's body. Please remove your shirt, sir. The same thing happened. Remove your singlet now. Everyone was flabbergasted after Levi took off his singlet. They were horrified by the numerous scars covering his body. The scars were left behind after. Sustaining cuts, bullet wounds, burns, and all other kinds of injuries. What kind of person could he be to receive all these scars? There are more of these scars than we can. See, judging from how the wounds overlap with one another. Is he a soldier? The thought flashed across. Perry's mind. Bring this mister to undergo a full body imaging, Perry commanded. The security guard subjected Levi to a scan using the equipment available inside the imaging room. Levi's X-ray was displayed on the screen shortly after. Everyone nearly passed out after examining the X-ray. There were 13 bullets embedded in his body. Three of the bullets were inches away from his brain, heart, and lungs. The bullet wound would have been fatal if the bullet's trajectory swayed a little. The rest of the bullets were lodged elsewhere in his body. Luckily, the bullets did not hit his vital organs, so Levi was not affected by the metal pieces inside his body. At that moment, Perry and the other guards were suddenly regarding Levi with the utmost respect. This man is a soldier who fought for our country. He sacrificed himself to protect our nation. He's not flinching a little, even with all these scars and bullets embedded in his body. Men like him are the reason we can carry on with our lives in peace. Sir, these are the identifications we took from him. The security guard handed Perry Levi's identification card and military card. Perry's legs wobbled, and he nearly slumped onto the floor after glancing at his military card. God. God of war? He's the God of war. Perry had never been so afraid in his life. We've heard of. The God of War's recent arrival at Northampton. The Protector Chapter 180. I did not expect God of War to be here in South City. At that moment, countless tanks arrived at the South City train station. Heavily armed soldiers sealed off the entire area with swift motions. The two soldiers leading the troop were evidently high-ranking officers in the army. Perry shivered fearfully at the sight of the two people who rushed into the office. He had predicted this. To happen. Are you Mr. Chapman? 
Let me introduce myself. I am Mortimer Lambert from the South War Zone. Perry was familiar with Mortimer Lambert's existence. He's one of the captains in the South War Zone. Perry shook hands with Mortimer immediately. It's a pleasure to meet you, Captain Lambert. This is one of the captains serving under the God of War himself, Captain Alfie Steele. His troop. Recently returned from the battlefield, Mortimer introduced the other soldier next to him. Perry saluted at once. Captain Steele, thank you for your services. Perry was aware that Alfie Steele and his men were actively protecting Arudaya on the battlefield. Alfie returned the salute. Thank you for your hard work too, Mr. Chapman. Then Alfie added, I heard you took the god of war into custody. Boom. Perry was stunned by that question. I'm doomed. More importantly, I cannot explain myself under this circumstance. The god of war is a high and mighty person, yet I subjected him to a security check and even searched his body. I must have offended him. That's all right. All of you did the right thing. Levi walked out of the imaging room after putting on his clothes. Sir. Alfie, Mortimer, and their subordinates saluted Levi immediately. Perry and his security team members said helplessly, We are terribly sorry to have wronged you, sir. Please punish us. Punish? Nonsense. You did the right thing. We should stay vigilant and tighten the security at a crucial time like this. It is a must for everyone to undergo the security check, regardless of their status. Levi responded. Tears brimmed in Perry's eyes. The God of War is such a gracious person. It must be an honor to serve him. I can clearly distinguish the unique pride in Captain Alfie and his men. Other soldiers do not give off an aura like this. What are you doing here with all your men, Alfie? Did you come here to wage war? Levi looked at Alfie sternly. Alfie answered swiftly, I did not plan to come here initially, sir. But I hurried over when I heard you were detained. Levi chuckled humorlessly after he kept his identifications. Do you think something bad will happen to me? This is just a normal security check. Ask all your men to retreat right now. Yes, sir. Alfie quickly relayed the commands. Don't worry. I will visit the battlefield once I have the time. Levi dragged Alfie aside and provided the latter with a few instructions. Please rest assured, sir. We have plenty of those things. I'll send the items over on time tomorrow. Alfie smiled. Levi patted Perry's shoulder before he took his leave. Keep up the good work. The internal security of this nation is resting on your shoulders. I will fulfill my responsibilities and duties, Chief. Perry saluted with a burning passion. Oh, by the way, you guys should retreat after I leave this place. Levi left first to prevent attracting any attention to himself. Zoe and the others heaved a sigh of relief when they saw Levi exiting the train station unscathed. Abigail blurted uncontrollably when she saw Levi. Did they discover your identity, Levi? Identity. Zoe and her parents gazed at Abigail simultaneously. The Protector Chapter 181 Abigail realized that she had let the cat out of the bag. Does Levi have any other identities? Zoe looked at Abigail dubiously, wondering if they were hiding anything from her. Levi laughed it off as he joked, Abigail was just worried that they'd found out that I was an ex-convict. Yeah, I thought that was the reason the alarm went off, Abigail reacted swiftly to Levi's cover-up. Which managed to temporarily ease Zoe's suspicion. What happened just now? Were you carrying anything that caused the alarm to sound non-stop? Aaron asked. Oh, it's just my lighter that is made of brass, that's why it got picked up by the metal detectors. Levi replied, as he took out his lighter and showed it to Aaron. Oh, let's go then, Bailey had sent someone to pick us up. 
The car had been waiting outside for a while. Caitlin was also raring to go. The group was driven to the Hilton Hotel. Due to the large number of guests invited to the birthday banquet, the guests were temporarily arranged to stay at the hotel. It seems like Dad and Mom had not yet completely gotten over what happened last time. Otherwise, we would be staying at the Black family mansion instead of the hotel, together with the rest of the guests. Caitlin's disappointment was apparent as she said that. Don't worry, honey, we're going to impress your family members later. I guarantee that their opinions of us will change for the better after that. Aaron was brimming with optimism as he comforted his wife. It was important to the couple to be recognized by the Black family. After everyone settled down in their hotel rooms, Abigail went to look for Levi and Zoe. My cousins from the Black family are having a gathering tonight, do you guys want to tag along? She asked. Sure, we'll go. Levi and Zoe accepted the invite readily. Abigail drove them to the venue in her pink Maserati. The gathering was held at the Scarlet Aegis Hotel. A meal there costs at least 10,000. Different models of luxury cars could be seen parked in the hotel's parking lot. Abigail led Levi and Zoe to the private room, where dozens of people had already gathered and were engaged in animated discussions with each other. Hey, Abigail is here. Let's welcome her. As Abigail was also a part of the Rogers family, she was very well liked and popular among her cousins in the Black family. For everyone else in the room, it was their first time meeting Levi and Zoe. When they saw Zoe, most of them were stunned by her beauty and were eager to know her. Abigail, why are you not introducing your friends to us? One of Abigail's cousins urged. This is Aunt Caitlin's daughter, Zoe. She's our cousin too. This is Levi, Zoe's husband, Abigail. Said. Oh. So it's our cousin Zoe. Abigail's brothers were the first to greet Zoe. As for Levi, he was being treated as though he was invisible. There were also a few attendees at the gathering who did not belong to the Black family, which meant that they were not blood-related to Zoe. The men who belonged to that category couldn't keep their eyes off Zoe. After all, it was not every day that one would come across such an exquisite beauty. After some mingling with the others, Levi found out that tonight's gathering was organized by Zoe's Cousins, Keen and Quintus. As the both of them were direct male descendants of the Black family, they were both held in high regard by the rest. Naturally, they were also the main focus of every discussion topic which went on that night. Keen laughed as he said, Zoe, I heard that your husband, Levi, was previously a dark horse of North. Hampton's business arena. Even the business moguls and owners of leading enterprises in South City knew his name. What's he up to these days? Quintus chuckled and said, Yeah, I remember that too. But we haven't heard any news about him in a long while. The two men were not trying to take a dig at Zoe, but were genuinely curious. The Black family was among the wealthiest in the city. Naturally, Zoe and her family would not be important enough for them to pay any attention to. They did try to find out more about Levi, during the days when he used to be a rising star in the business arena. However, no one had news about Levi after he went to jail. The Protector Chapter 181. 22-04-2021 by Chapter Novel. Abigail realized that she had let the cat out of the bag. Does Levi have any other identities? Zoe looked at Abigail dubiously, wondering if they were hiding anything from her. Levi laughed it off as he joked, Abigail was just worried that they'd found out that I was an ex-convict. Yeah, I thought that was the reason the alarm went off, Abigail reacted swiftly to Levi's cover-up. Which managed to temporarily ease Zoe's suspicion. What happened just now? Were you carrying anything that caused the alarm to sound non-stop? Aaron asked. Oh, it's just my lighter that is made of brass, 
that's why it got picked up by the metal detectors. Levi replied, as he took out his lighter and showed it to Aaron. Oh, let's go then, Bailey had sent someone to pick us up. The car had been waiting outside for a while. Caitlin was also raring to go. The group was driven to the Hilton Hotel. Due to the large number of guests invited to the birthday banquet, the guests were temporarily arranged to stay at the hotel. It seems like Dad and Mom had not yet completely gotten over what happened last time. Otherwise, we would be staying at the Black family mansion instead of the hotel, together with the rest of the guests. Caitlin's disappointment was apparent as she said that. Don't worry, honey, we're going to impress your family members later. I guarantee that their opinions of us will change for the better after that. Aaron was brimming with optimism as he comforted his wife. It was important to the couple to be recognized by the Black family. After everyone settled down in their hotel rooms, Abigail went to look for Levi and Zoe. My cousins from the Black family are having a gathering tonight, do you guys want to tag along? She asked. Sure, we'll go. Levi and Zoe accepted the invite readily. Abigail drove them to the venue in her pink Maserati. The gathering was held at the Scarlet Aegis Hotel. A meal there costs at least 10,000. Different models of luxury cars could be seen parked in the hotel's parking lot. Abigail led Levi and Zoe to the private room, where dozens of people had already gathered and were engaged in animated discussions with each other. Hey. Abigail is here. Let's welcome her. As Abigail was also a part of the Rogers family, she was very well liked and popular among her cousins in the Black family. For everyone else in the room, it was their first time meeting Levi and Zoe. When they saw Zoe, most of them were stunned by her beauty and were eager to know her. Abigail, why are you not introducing your friends to us? One of Abigail's cousins urged. This is Aunt Caitlin's daughter, Zoe. She's our cousin too. This is Levi, Zoe's husband, Abigail. Said. Oh. So it's our cousin Zoe. Abigail's brothers were the first to greet Zoe. As for Levi, he was being treated as though he was invisible. There were also a few attendees at the gathering who did not belong to the Black family, which meant. That they were not blood related to Zoe. The men who belonged to that category couldn't keep their eyes off Zoe. After all, it was not every day that one would come across such an exquisite beauty. After some mingling with the others, Levi found out that tonight's gathering was organized by Zoe's cousins, Keen and Quintus. As the both of them were direct male descendants of the Black family, they were both held in high regard by the rest. Naturally, they were also the main focus of every discussion topic which went on that night. Keen laughed as he said, Zoe, I heard that your husband, Levi, was previously a dark horse of North. Hampton's business arena. Even the business moguls and owners of leading enterprises in South City. Knew his name. What's he up to these days? Quintus chuckled and said, Yeah, I remember that too. But we haven't heard any news about him in a long while. The two men were not trying to take a dig at Zoe, but were genuinely curious. The Black family was among the wealthiest in the city. Naturally, Zoe and her family would not be important enough for them to pay any attention to. They did try to find out more about Levi, during the days when he used to be a rising star in the business arena. However, no one had news about Levi after he went to jail. The Protector Chapter 182 People stopped being curious about him after that. After all, no one would waste time inquiring about a nobody. Hayden Zeller, a distant relative of the Black family who was from Northampton, joined in on the conversation and said, Oh I know what happened. Levi was sentenced to jail after he was convicted of taking advantage of his sister-in-law. If I'm not mistaken, he was only released a few days ago. That's right. 
it was one of the biggest news in Northampton when it happened. Some others, who were listening to the conversation, concurred. Keane's expression changed when he heard that, but still remained friendly as he asked, So, Levi. You're currently unemployed. Levi nodded and replied, Kind of. After getting the man's answer, Keen and Quintus had totally lost interest in continuing the conversation. Even Zoe, who had just secured an investment of a few hundred million, suddenly seemed boring to them. The men changed topics and carried on with their own conversations. Zoe hardly had anything to contribute to their subsequent discussions. Oh, by the way, is Russell back yet? Keen asked all of a sudden. Russell was his dad's godson. The man had been outstanding since young, and he's currently the leader of a subdivision of the Special Security Unit. Word has it that he was going to be promoted to the chief of the Special Security Unit next year. Speaking of Russell, he's truly the pride and joy of our grandma. Quintus laughed. That was indeed the case. Even though Russell was not related to the Black family by blood, he was the elderly Mrs. Black's favorite. He had always been conscientiousness and performed well in every endeavor he partook in. Russell would only be 28 next year, so it was an impressive feat that he was already the deputy chief of the special security unit. The Black family had an abundance of wealth, but what the family lacked however, was a talent like Russell. He was the perfect missing piece to the puzzle for the Black family. Shortly after his name was mentioned, Russell Black arrived at the gathering, still dressed in his uniform. Hi everyone, so sorry that I'm late. I have been really busy with the preparations for the upcoming economic summit these few days. I even had to specially apply for leave to attend Grandma's birthday banquet tomorrow. Russell explained and let out an embarrassed laughter. Russell is such a busy man, but he knows he's the apple of grandma's eye, so he has to be here by hook or by crook. Someone teased, and everyone else laughed along. However, Keen switched the topic abruptly, asking, I heard that there was an incident at the train station today, that even your chief had to handle the matter personally. Russell nodded and replied, yet. Yeah, you heard about it too? That's actually the reason I was late for tonight's gathering. Russell, tell us what happened. I'm sure everyone wants to know about it, Quintus said. Russell scanned the curious faces in the room and chuckled, before elaborating, there was a super big shot who visited the train station today. He came to examine our security measures without informing anyone beforehand. Thank goodness we discovered that it was him. Russell let out a gasp, as he recalled the dramatic events of the day. So how did you guys find out that it was him? Everyone was eager to know what happened next. When he went through the metal detectors while exiting the train station, the alarm sounded. We stopped him from leaving and did a body check on him. Guess what we found? Everyone held their breaths as they waited for Russell to continue. We found out that there were 13 bullets and 7 grenade shrapnel lodged inside his body. One of the bullets was even in his skull and another one in his heart. It's the metal from the bullets and shrapnel. That caused the alarm to sound. Even Russell himself found it inconceivable. What? 13 bullets and 7 grenade shrapnel. Everyone was shocked by what Russell told them and sharp inhales could be heard all round. What's even scarier was that his entire body was covered with scars. From my estimation, there were definitely no less than a thousand of them. Everyone went pale with disbelief at Russell's description of the man. It was unimaginable as to what kind of horrors he must had gone through. What was the time when he was there? Zoe suddenly asked. It was around 2.10 in the afternoon. Russell replied. Zoe turned to look at her husband. She had registered that it was the same time Levi was held up at the security check earlier today. Besides, 
Levi had nothing on him which could have caused the alarm to sound. The Protector Chapter 183 After Russell's description of the event, Zoe suddenly realized that it could have been the metal pieces. Lodged inside of Levi's body which caused the metal detectors to go off, instead of the lighter, which was what he had told them earlier on. She wished that she could see through Levi's clothes, and verify what Russell said with her own eyes. That very instant, Quintus, who was intrigued, asked, How's that even possible? Russell, who is this guy? We don't exactly know who he is, as his files had been classified as Fives level, which means no one in the entire of South City would have access to it. But I heard from our chief that he used to be an officer from the Iron Brigade. Russell replied excitedly. Iron Brigade? Isn't that the team that's personally led by the God of War? Exactly. That's the strongest military unit in Arudaya. Every soldier who's part of that team is a man of indomitable spirit. The men at the gathering were all stirred at the mention of the God of War and the Iron Brigade. Every man, regardless of age, would have dreamed of becoming a soldier at some point in time of their lives. Being in the Iron Brigade was the greatest recognition and highest honor for every soldier. Yet, when I was at the military academy, my goal was also to join the Iron Brigade and fight. Alongside the God of War. Russell was no exception. Abigail was feeling proud when she saw the longing expressions of those men in the room. At that moment, she really wanted to stand up and tell everyone that the God of War, who was revered by all, was none other than her cousin-in-law, Levi. If those warriors from the Iron Brigade could be present at Grandma's birthday banquet, I bet Grandpa and Grandma would both be delighted. Keen said. Yet, yeah, Grandpa and Grandma were once guards as well. They'll definitely be over the moon to meet someone from the Iron Brigade. Exactly. Grandpa and Grandma love the special alcohol and cigarettes provided by the war zones, but nowadays they hardly have the chance to enjoy them anymore. Everyone was contributing to the lively discussion going on in the room. Quintus looked at Russell and said, Russell, do you think you can pull some strings and invite just one of the officers from the Iron Brigade to join us at Grandma's birthday banquet tomorrow? Yeah, if you can do that. It'll definitely be the best birthday present for Grandma. Keen added. Russell hesitated for a second before nodding his head and said, Okay, I'll try. Hopefully, we can give Grandma a surprise tomorrow. Even though he agreed to ask around, Russell was not confident at all that he'll succeed in his task. The main reason for that was because his chief, Perry, had told him earlier on that the man who appeared at the train station in the afternoon was someone out of his reach, not to mention Russell, who was only a leader of a subdivision of the security unit. No one at the gathering bothered to talk to Zoe or Levi for the rest of the night, it was just as if they both of them were invisible. To a big family like the Blacks, they were merely nobodies. After the dinner gathering ended, Russell specially paid Perry a visit to tell him his thoughts. Perry was scared out of his wits when he heard the idea. He pointed at Russell and said, Why why you? You have the audacity to invite that man. Russell was trembling with anxiety at his chief's reaction and replied, Chief, is that guy someone very important? As the information was classified, Perry was unable to divulge any details to Russell. That's right, anyway, you should really stop thinking about it. I'm not even qualified enough to invite Captain Steele from the Northampton Dragon Legion, let alone that man from this afternoon. Just drop the idea completely. Perry rejected Russell's request without giving it any consideration. All right then. But Chief, you have to be there with the Deputy Chief tomorrow, deal. Russell said. Don't worry, I wouldn't miss old Mrs. Black's birthday banquet for the world. Everyone was disappointed when Russell conveyed the negative outcome to them, but they did not blame him. After all, the Iron Brigade had a special status in the military. 
no one expected that it would be easy to invite them. Meanwhile, Zoe started having major suspicions about Levi after the gathering. The Protector Chapter 184 Even though they had been sleeping on the same bed, they had not been intimate, so it was only natural that Zoe had not seen Levi's naked body. As such, she had planned to examine Levi's body tonight, in order to verify if he actually had those scars on his body. However, Abigail had requested to share her bed, so in the end, Zoe was unable to carry out her plan. The next day arrived and it was the day of old Mrs. Black's birthday. Levi and the rest were being woken up early in the morning, and were all gathered at the hotel lobby. Shortly after, transportation arranged by the Black family arrived to pick them up to the Black family. Manor Aaron clutched the birthday gift for his mother-in-law in his arms. He was looking forward to impressing his wife's family at the banquet later on. Caitlin had also checked with Levi if he had prepared any gift, and only felt at ease after confirming that he had not done so. The scale of the Black family was comparable to the Garrison family, which was recently listed. The family manor was extremely posh and grand. The various luxury cars that were parked at the front porch were sufficient to form an auto show. The three brothers from the Black family stood at the entrance to receive their guests personally. The head of the Black family household, Robert Black, and his wife Meredith, were in the main hall of the manor. They were both dressed in red, all ready for the auspicious occasion. After they were discharged from the military, the both of them started from scratch and managed to build a successful business empire over the years. Because of their hard work and efforts, the Black family had become one of the wealthiest family in the city. In addition to that, the family was also flourishing. The couple had expanded their family and was joined by their many children and grandchildren. The two esteemed elderly of the Black family were very contented with their current state of life. Dad, Mom, look who's here. Bailey led Aaron's family to Robert and Meredith. Dad, Mom. Caitlin was overwhelmed with emotions and shed tears of joy when she met her parents. Aaron was also feeling emotional and was ready to greet the two elders. But Robert merely gave a slight nod while Meredith let out a cold snort and only took a glance at them, before looking away. Caitlin and Aaron were both stunned to be given the cold shoulder. Caitlin immediately realized that, even though her mom had invited them to her birthday celebration, it would still take some time for her to fully accept them. However, Caitlin was already feeling grateful to be able to see her parents again. The atmosphere in the room turned awkward for a moment. To ease the tension, Pamela said, Oh, Mom and Dad, weren't you two looking forward to meeting? Zoe. While saying that, she shoved Zoe in front of the two elders. Hi Grandpa, hi Grandma. Zoe greeted her grandparents politely. As it was her first time meeting her grandparents, Zoe was a little nervous. After sizing Zoe up carefully, Robert and Meredith said in satisfaction, she seems like a good kid. We like her. Oh, I heard that Zoe is really capable. She even managed to secure a few hundred millions of investment for her company. The two elders of the family thought rather highly of Zoe, especially Meredith. That was because the old lady was a successful woman herself, and had never shown preference for boys over girls. Instead, among her children and grandchildren, she actually valued the females of the family more. Back in the days, she had also placed high hopes on Caitlin, but her daughter ended up eloping with Aaron, which broke Meredith's heart. That was the reason why the mother and daughter had not seen each other for over twenty years. Bailey shot a glance at Levi and said, Why are you still standing there? Aren't you going to introduce yourself? With a grin on his face, Levi walked towards the elderly couple and said, Hi Grandpa and Grandma, it's a pleasure meeting the both of you. I'm Zoe's husband, Levi. Robert observed Levi for a few seconds, and felt that there was a mysterious aura surrounding him. 
but he wasn't able to pinpoint exactly why. Either Levi is trying to conceal something, or he is just someone who usually goofed around, was what? Robert thought. I heard that you were once the rising star in the business circle of Northampton, but was sent to jail. For six years. You just finished serving time recently, right? Meredith spoke. Even though Meredith appeared to be unconcerned, she was, in fact, very in touch with what was going on in Aaron's family. That's right, Grandma, I just got released from prison. Levi answered truthfully. So, what are your plans going forward? Meredith asked. Since Zoe is doing so well, my plan is just to assist her whenever she needs me. I'm a lucky man to have a wife I can depend on. Everyone froze upon hearing Levi's words. The Protector Chapter 185 Looks of shock appeared on everyone's faces. Especially Caitlin who was seized by terror. Everyone was well aware of Meredith's stern and stiff personality. She couldn't tolerate people who behaved in a boisterous manner like Levi. Someone with a military police background like Russell would be well liked by her. Besides, how could a mere foundling gain a foothold in a wealthy family? Meredith gave Levi a deep look before she left, obviously disappointed in him. Robert let out a deep sigh before following suit, lamenting about how Zoe, given her status would marry such a husband. What the hell are you doing? You're challenging the authority of the old lady. She hates people who fool around like you the most. Bailey and Pamela glared daggers at Levi. You've ruined us. The old lady has finally accepted us because of Zoe, but you just had to provoke her again, didn't you? Caitlin almost cried from exasperation. Would the old lady have accepted us immediately today if our son-in-law weren't Levi, but someone else? Aaron hugged Caitlin. Honey, don't cry. We'll regain our dignity and make the old lady acknowledge us when the birthday banquet officially starts later. I supposed that's all we can do. Caitlin was physically and mentally frustrated. Shortly after, most of the guests had arrived, apart from the big shots. Robert and Meredith personally greeted them at the door, with Levi and the others following behind them. Soon, several cars marked with the SWAT logo appeared. Russell was the first to come down. He ran to the back, opened the car door, and greeted the leaders. One by one. Grandpa, Grandma, let me introduce you. This is Shane Young, the captain of the Special Security Unit, Hugo Gibson, the Vice Captain, Frankie Wimmer, the Political Commissar, Quincy King, the Vice Captain of the City Patrol Unit. Russell introduced them to about seven to eight leaders in one breath. There were about a dozen more leaders behind who were at the same level as Russell, all of whom held official positions such as team leaders. Perry led everyone forward, extending their blessings, Mrs. Black, may you be blessed with longevity and great prosperity. Welcome, Captain Chapman. Welcome, Robert and Meredith grinned from ear to ear, seeing the support of so many leaders. Keen and Quintus chuckled. You really outdid yourself there, Russell. Mr. and Mrs. Black. I would like to commend Russell, Perry said. He has so much potential. I'll make him vice-captain next year. The Black family will have something to be proud of again. Hearing those compliments coming straight from Perry's mouth, Meredith and Robert were all the more exhilarated as they looked at Russell with satisfaction. The Protector Chapter 186 Levi had heard of Jenny and Logan just now. Jenny was the daughter of Zayden, the eldest son of the Black family, and she was currently the deputy governor of New Alliance Bank in South City. Her husband, Logan Zacks, was all the more powerful. His grandfather, who had now retired, once served on the front lines of South City. His father was the deputy director of the Ministry of Economy and also served as a leader in the Ministry of Commerce. 
Jenny and Abigail were both Meredith's favorite granddaughters. As expected, Jenny and Logan arrived shortly after, together with Logan's grandfather, Graham, and his father, Felix. Graham was also a big shot who was formerly the deputy leader at the South War Zone. He had many disciples but had since retired. Felix was in the prime of his life, holding an important position. Their attendance had greatly elevated the black family's social status. Happy birthday! Graham and Felix extended their wishes one after another. Meredith grasped Jenny and Logan's hands, smiling brightly with narrowed eyes. Envy. They were filled with envy. Both Aaron and Caitlin had been dreaming about the day their son-in-law could set the Thames on fire. Just so they could keep their head up. But unfortunately, their son-in-law can never compare to that of others. Just their luck to have met such a son-in-law like Levi. Haha, <laughs> the younger generation of the black family is full of talents. Let alone our grandchildren, how? Many people in South City have as many talents and skills as our grandson-in-law. Meredith said. Proudly in front of hundreds of guests. That's right, Russell and the others chimed in. How many are there who are as gifted as Logan in? South City. Logan adjusted his tie, smiling, I don't deserve your praise, Grandpa, Grandma. The sons-in-law of. The Black family are all outstanding. I heard that there's a son-in-law from Northampton. Isn't he? Very powerful? He'd built a multi-billion conglomerate from scratch. Is he here? Logan asked. Looking around. Knowing that Logan was referring to Levi, Aaron and Caitlin suddenly felt ashamed. They lowered. Their heads and pulled Levi aside, wanting to hide. Aunt Caitlin, Uncle Aaron, why are you guys hiding? Northampton's son-in-law, Levi Garrison, is over here. Someone mercilessly pointed out Levi's position. Everyone around retreated, revealing a large open space showing only Levi and his family. At once, all eyes zeroed in on them. So you are Levi Garrison. Logan smiled. I heard that your net worth was over a billion. How about? Now? I bet it's now worth more than the entire black family. Yet, yeah, with your potential, hitting 10 billion is pretty attainable, said Jenny. Being watched by hundreds of noble relatives, Aaron and Caitlin broke out in a cold sweat. They were too anxious. This moment was too humiliating. It was evident to Zoe that they were deliberately putting Levi in a tough spot. Just as she was about to speak up for him, Levi blurted, to answer Jenny and Logan's questions, yes. It has definitely surpassed that of the Black family since long ago. Money was just a number to him. If he could look down upon the Rogers family who worth tens of billions, what more the puny Black family? Everyone gasped at Levi's reply. Levi's bravado is really something. What a load of crap. Haha, <laughs> isn't that a given, Captain Chapman? Russell has always been the pride of the Black family said Meredith unabashedly. This made everyone envious, especially Caitlin and Aaron. How nice would it be if Mrs. Black could be proud of them someday? Too bad they couldn't do it by themselves and could only rely on their daughter and their son-in-law. But could a useless son-in-law like Levi ever make them proud? Never. Grandpa, Grandma, I was going to invite the big shots from the war zone, but there's only so much I can do. Russell said humbly. This is more than enough, Russell, Meredith smiled approvingly. It's enough that Captain Chapman and the others could make it. Indeed. With you, Russell, plus Jenny and Logan, it's the right degree of pomp. Keen and Quintus. Both laughed. The Protector Chapter 187 How intimidating. Can you give us an exact number regarding your net worth? Yeah, tell us. Grandpa and Grandma will certainly be proud of you. Logan and Jenny laughed out instead of getting angry. Levi, don't. Zoe and her parents were so anxious that they almost covered Levi's mouth. 
But Levi slowly raised a finger. At least this much. At least ten billion. Logan asked. No Levi shook his head. Could it be a hundred billion? Logan winced when he said that number. Levi chuckled. You're wrong. It's at least one trillion. Pfft. Ha ha ha. Everyone laughed themselves silly at Levi's words. The reason everyone was quiet from was before was to see how far Levi could go with his big talk. But who knew it was out of this world? At least one trillion. What on earth is this? It's the equivalent of a hundred times the black family. Logan, his grandfather and father all laughed. They had never seen such a man with such bravado before. Forget about personal ownership. Even the Ministry of Economy doesn't have that much money. The others laughed wildly. Even Russell, a man of speech and manner, roared with laughter. As for Meredith and Robert, their faces were turning as black as charcoal. It was an insult to them. Levi was blatantly challenging their authority. You're both sons-in-law. How can there be such a huge difference? Meredith flared with anger. Discipline your son-in-law, she said directly to Aaron and Caitlin. He should know what he should say and what he shouldn't say on such an occasion. Aaron and Caitlin trembled in fright and dared not raise their heads. Caitlin was even shedding tears. She had never felt so upset before. Even after what had happened at the Lopez family, she had never been so upset. Caitlin had been longing to her family for thirty years and now there was finally a chance. But she was utterly humiliated in front of her relatives when she finally met them for the first time. She wanted to end her life there and then. It's Levi's fault. It's all Levi's fault. Aaron's fist clenched. He swore he would punch Levi in the face once the birthday banquet was over. This is too effing embarrassing. Zoe, too, was disappointed through and through with Levi. Levi has gotten used to talking big. It's become a habit. He wasn't thinking clearly when he said he had ten billion to the Lopez family. But now, to the Black family a trillion? Does he not understand the concept of money? How could he say such big words? Zoe regretted it. She should have listened to her parents and left Levi at home. Sure enough, her parents were put to shame as soon as they arrived. Unfortunately, there was no crying over spilled milk. They're both sons-in-law, but they're like night and day. One's a great catch, and the other is trash. I heard that Levi Garrison has a bad reputation. He harbored evil thoughts towards his sister-in-law. And almost killed his adoptive parents. Their entire family is trash. Otherwise, Mrs. Black wouldn't have only met this daughter of hers after. Thirty years. Hearing all kinds of comment from the people around. Tears flowed down Caitlin's face like a river. How embarrassing! This was definitely the most humiliating moment in her entire life. Aaron felt the same too. He thought that he could steal the limelight at the Black family, but he was utterly disgraced. Quickly get inside. What on earth are you doing here? The Protector Chapter 188 Don't you think you have done enough to embarrass the entire family in front of so many people? Bailey chided in disappointment. Aaron and Caitlin had no choice but to return to the villa. Don't follow me. Caitlin shouted at Levi. After arriving at the manor's main hall, everyone was seated according to arrangements. Aaron and his family were seated at the corner, far away from Meredith. Only those who Meredith regarded as important could sit at the front. Honey, the gift presentation is up next. I'm sure Meredith will be happy to accept our gifts, Aaron," said. Caitlin wiped away her tears and waited silently. When the guests had filled up the room, the host announced the start of the banquet and the ceremonies. Proceeded one after another. Now is the time for gift presentation. Everyone started presenting their gifts as soon as the host finished. There were gifts of a wide variety, but they were all valuable. Hearing what the others had brought, Aaron and Caitlin were filled with aplomb. Because none of those gifts that were presented could be compared to what their family had prepared. 
those gifts were far inferior to theirs. In the face of all sorts of gifts, Meredith simply nodded indifferently. Come on. Let's go. She will definitely be happy. Aaron and Caitlin quickly pulled Zoe to the front, waiting to present their gifts. I see you're well prepared, Caitlin, said Zena, Caitlin's cousin who was queuing at the front with her husband, Samson Fleming. Haha, <laughs> and so were you. Aaron and Caitlin smiled, thinking about how happy Meredith would be upon receiving their gifts in just a bit. Up next, it's the birthday gift of Zena and Samson an authentic calligraphy painting of an ancient notable artist worth 700,000 a 500-year-old wild ginseng, and last but not least, a jade Buddha Zena had sought from the holy mountain to bless Mrs. Black with good health. The host read out the list of gifts Zena's family had prepared. The whole room burst into applause. Everyone was satisfied with their gifts. The Jade Buddha especially was thoughtful. Hearing that, Meredith flashed a smile at last, obviously liking these gifts very much. Zena, Samson, I like your gifts very much. Meredith said. However, Aaron, Caitlin and Zoe were dumbfounded. Because the gifts they had prepared were almost exactly the same as theirs. Most importantly, the former's gifts were several times more expensive than theirs and they were queuing right behind them. They wondered what Meredith would think of them if she found out their similar but relatively cheaper gifts. Aaron and Caitlin were so nervous that they could barely breathe. Up next, we have Caitlin and Aaron's gifts. Hmm. Seeing the gifts, even the host himself was stunned. What a coincidence. What is it? Is there a problem with their gifts? Someone asked. The host organized his thoughts and read aloud, Caitlin and family have gifted a calligraphy painting. Worth 300 million, a hundred-year-old wild ginseng, and a jade Buddha requested from Northampton's Temple of Peace. Yes, how thoughtful. They're exactly the same gifts as what Ms. Zena and her family had prepared. Except that they're lower in value by a double. Aaron and Caitlin wished the ground could swallow them whole as soon as the host finished. How embarrassing! What a disgrace! The Protector Chapter 189 Why is life so unfair to us? Why does such misfortune always befall us? Their gifts were exactly the same, but the price was twice as low as theirs. And they were queuing. Right behind them. Even Zoe felt ashamed. She couldn't bear to stay there any longer. Zena and Samson looked at Aaron's family helplessly. They didn't expect that they had prepared similar gifts. What do you mean, thoughtful? Isn't that just a duplicate? At least prepare similar gifts at the same price. Who are they trying to fool? Aren't they looking down on Mrs. Black? Is Mrs. Black short of that few hundred thousand? Are you kidding me? The crowd erupted in anger. Seeing the gifts Caitlin and her family had gifted, Meredith snorted angrily, If you don't want to prepare gifts, just don't. Why do you keep embarrassing yourself? Robert sighed. What a disgrace. With no dignity left, Caitlin longed to bury her head into the ground. They'll remember this day forever. I shouldn't have come. It's all Levi's fault. If Levi is powerful enough, we wouldn't have been reduced to such a state. If Levi's worth a dozen of billions, Mom would have been happy with just our presence alone. Right behind them was Logan's family. Graham and Felix casually presented some symbolic gifts. In fact, with their status, their presence was the greatest gift. Meredith was thrilled. Grandma, I present you with a pair of legendary luminous pearls worth ten million. I had to travel to 10 foreign cities in order to get it at an auction, said Logan. The crowd seethed with excitement. As compared to the few hundred thousand gifts from Aaron and his family before, it was an instant kill. The difference was like night and day. Meredith liked this pair of legendary luminous pearls so much that she personally accepted them. See that? She gave Aaron's family a look. This is what you call a gift. 
even if Logan's gift is worth a penny, I would still like it because it's prepared with intentions. Caitlin and Aaron hid at the corner and dared not look up. They could only hope for the birthday banquet to end soon and leave South City as soon as possible. I'm going out first, Levi suddenly said to Zoe and vanished from sight, just as Zoe was about to ask him something. In the main hall, gifts were still being presented. And with greater value. Zayden presented a three billion project contract. Everyone in attendance was stunned. Russell and the others presented their gifts as well, with Russell giving a rare special saber instead of gifts worth tens of millions. I know you like this stuff, Grandma. I went to great lengths to get this, Russell said. Yes, I like it. Meredith used to reign over the battlefield, and hence she liked the saber very much. Finally, a few other grandsons-in-law also presented their gifts, which made Meredith beam in delight. Allow me to speak on behalf of all the sons-in-law in the Black family, Logan suddenly spoke. It seems that every son-in-law has presented their gifts besides Levi Garrison from Aunt Caitlin's family. Am I right? Yeah, he didn't. Everyone shifted their gaze to Aaron's table, focusing on them again. Oh yeah, where is he? Did he run away? The Protector Chapter 190 no way. Doesn't that mean he didn't prepare anything? Did he have to run away for that? I know, right? I mean, even if he did prepare something, Mrs. Black wouldn't have liked it either. Everyone sneered. Who said I didn't prepare a gift, a voice as loud as thunder was heard. Everyone turned to look in the direction of where the sound came from, only to see Levi standing at the doors holding two black plastic bags in his hands with a cigarette in his mouth. Meredith and Robert's faces scrunched up in disgust at Levi's frivolous appearance. They hated it. And seeing the two black plastic bags in his hands that were obviously meant for grocery shopping, what good could come out of it? Ha ha ha, this is hilarious. Could there be vegetables or steamed buns inside? Everyone laughed so hard that their stomach hurt when they saw those two plastic bags. Using such a bag to pack his gifts on such an occasion was definitely an insult to the old lady. What are you doing, Levi? No one asked you to get any gifts. Afraid that Levi was up to no good, Caitlin and Aaron were about to dash forward to stop him. It was already humiliating enough. If Levi did anything to add fuel to the fire, they were as good as dead. Sit down. Meredith suddenly shouted. Caitlin and Aaron could only obey. Grandma, what can he even put in that bag? Logan asked. Let's just skip this. But Meredith was stubborn. No. Let him come. I want to see what his gift is. Yeah, let's see what this son-in-law has prepared. Everyone was burning with curiosity. Come here, Levi. Logan grinned, glad to watch Levi make a fool of himself. After all, Levi was the Black family's son-in-law who was often bracketed with him back then. With that, Levi went forward step by step, smoking a cigarette. Seeing the plastic bags, everyone was guessing what was inside. With Levi approaching, Perry and the others who were sitting at the front were petrified when they suddenly recognized him. Perry instinctively shot to his feet and was about to greet him when he stood frozen upon noticing the expression in his eyes. Everyone looked at Perry curiously. What's wrong, Captain Chapman? Russell, who was next to him, asked. Perry sat down quietly. Nothing. I just got a cramp in my leg. Levi came to Meredith and Robert at last. How dare you smoke in front of Grandpa and Grandma? Do you have a death wish? Logan was very displeased. However, Robert and Meredith noticed something strange. The cigarette in Levi's mouth seemed to be a special cigarette from the war zone. Especially that strong tobacco scent. It could only be found in the war zone. Robert and Meredith were sure of that. Shall I open it? Levi asked. Go ahead. 
For some reason, Robert and Meredith were looking forward to it. As if something good could be found inside this filthy plastic bag. Levi took out two boxes of cigarettes and two bottles of liquors from the bag and presented them before. Robert and Meredith Grandson-in-law Levi Garrison presents two boxes of cigarettes and two bottles of liquors. The military green packaging of the cigarettes and liquor was very simple, and its workmanship was very rough. Levi, are you crazy? Logan guffawed. How could you present such poor quality cigarettes and liquor as gifts? The Protector Chapter 191 Everyone caught a glimpse of the packaging and seemed to be thinking along the same lines. How good could those cigarettes and liquors be from that crude packaging? Aaron and Caitlin wanted to hide under the table when they heard that. No wonder Levi asked the old lady for her preference just now. If the cheap goods are exposed this time, it'd be over. Mom would definitely cut ties with us on the spot. Caitlin had to hold herself back from strangling Levi. Those must be poor cigarettes and liquor, someone said. Russell, Perry, and the others, however, hesitated for a moment. It seems to be special cigarettes from the war zone. Especially that dragon symbol on the packaging. Quintus and Logan exchanged glances and laughed, Grandpa, Grandma, why don't we just throw these poor quality gifts into the bin? They're an eyesore. Shut up. Robert and Meredith suddenly roared in unison. They took the cigarettes and liquors in their hands, appraising them as if appreciating a work of art. The careful way they handled the gifts was all the more palpable than holding the ten million. Legendary luminous pearls just now. Their knitted brows gradually relaxed as a heartfelt smile flashed onto their faces. They were much happier than receiving those gifts from before. Everyone looked at the two puzzledly wondering what was so famous about these cigarettes and liquor. After a full minute, Robert and Meredith looked at each other and said excitedly, It's real. Levi took a drag of smoke, smiling, I wonder if you like what I've prepared for you. Yes. We love it. Robert and Meredith nodded incessantly. Meredith even took over the microphone, beaming, the gifts from my grandson-in-law, Levi. Garrison, are my favorite. A deathly silence filled the room. Aaron and Caitlin who were waiting for the verdict were especially taken aback and Zoe was filled. With disbelief. Logan, Quintus and the others couldn't believe their ears as they asked curiously, Grandpa, Grandma. Are you guys mistaken? It's obvious from the packaging that it's of poor quality. How could it be your favorite? You guys are too shallow. You will most likely never see these cigarettes and liquor in your lifetime. Said Meredith, waving the boxes of cigarettes and liquor in her hands with unrestrained excitement on her face. Robert chimed in, these are special cigarettes and liquor from the war zone. It's true that they're scarce, but it's not like they're very rare, Logan said. If he wanted it, he could have gotten them through connections. Meredith glared at him. Humph. Do you think that these are merely cigarettes and liquor from the war? Zone? These are special cigarettes of the Iron Brigade under the command of the God of War, the Protector of Arudaya. There are special signs on the packaging, such as the dragon and the words at the bottom. Anyone with a little background knows that the Iron Brigade's special cigarettes and liquor are not available to the public. You can't buy a glass of the Iron Brigade's special liquor even if you have tens of billions. Exactly. You can't get the Iron Brigade's special liquor, no matter your background or your connections. We had it once at the home of a retired soldier of the Iron Brigade, and we couldn't forget its taste. Until today. This is the real Iron Brigade's cigarette and liquor. A hush descended over the crowd at those words. The Protector Chapter 192 Everyone regarded Levi with an incredulous gaze. How did he get those special cigarettes and liquors that couldn't be bought with ten billion? What did he do? Robert and Meredith were hugging the special cigarettes and liquor as if they were their most precious treasure. Dear, 
will just take a little sip of liquor and smoke half a cigarette every day. These things are too rare and they'll be gone before we know it, Meredith said with distress. Levi smiled. If you want it, I can still get it for you. I guarantee you can have them every day. I got a little today because I was afraid you wouldn't like it. Really, the old couple asked in disbelief, their eyes rounded. There's plenty of this stuff, Levi chuckled. I promise I can get them. Once the banquet is over, I'll send another car over. There are plenty of these with the Dragon Legion. That's great. We're proud to have a grandson-in-law like you. The old couple had forgotten about everything else and only had eyes for Levi when they saw these. Cigarettes and liquor. All right, that's about it, Levi smiled. Many people are watching. Upon realizing the enormity of their faux pas, they laughed bashfully. Caitlin, Aaron, Zoe, said Meredith, pointing at the said family. Come sit with me. Caitlin and Aaron could not believe their ears. They went forward in a daze and sat at the table where Meredith and Robert were seated. Let me take the opportunity of the birthday banquet to announce something, Meredith said. They. Black family has agreed to my daughter, Caitlin Black's return. Caitlin wept with joy at the announcement. She had been waiting for this day for almost 30 years. Aaron was also incredibly emotional. The Black family had finally accepted them. Zoe was happy as well. Caitlin, Aaron, you two got yourselves a good son-in-law there. Robert and Meredith couldn't help but compliment. Aaron and Caitlin were delighted. Levi, you've made us proud. We shouldn't have blamed you. Mom, Dad, glad that you're happy, Levi smiled. Aaron and Caitlin squared their shoulders, looking at the crowd arrogantly. Now that Mr. and Mrs. Black have voiced their approval, who dares to make fun of us now? Our son-in-law is just as capable, thank you very much. Everyone kept their lips sealed. Instead of mocking them, they were now looking at them with envy. Because Graham, Felix, Perry and the others were seated at the same table. That meant that in Meredith's eyes, Aaron's family was just as important as them. Just then, someone suddenly came in, reporting, reporting, Mr. Black. A few military officers outside. Who claimed to be stationed at the South War Zone want to congratulate Mrs. Black on her birthday. Puzzled, Robert asked. Did they mention their identities? They did. One of them is the head of the Dragon Legion of the Iron Brigade, Captain Steele, and there were a few colonels as well, the subordinate replied. What? The captain of the Dragon Legion of the Iron Brigade. Robert, Meredith, and the others jumped to their feet. Even Graham, who was once a deputy leader and Felix, the deputy director of the city's Ministry of Economy, shot up. The fact that the Dragon Legion was stationed at the South War Zone was well known among the higher UPS. Quintus and Keane looked at each other. A thought occurred to them as they said, Damn, Russell. You even invited Captain Steele of the Iron Brigade. That's a big surprise. The Protector Chapter 193 The rest of the Black family looked at Russell admiringly. Did you specially prepare this Russell? I thought you said you couldn't invite anyone from the war zone. Yet, yeah, Russell must have lied to us to give us a big surprise. Russell's parents gave him an approving look. Robert and Meredith were all the more surprised to hear that they were military officers from the Iron Brigade. Their eyes crinkled into a smile. Not bad, Russell. I didn't expect so many surprises today. Your grandma's greatest pride and joy. Under such circumstances, Russell had to claim credit, even if he didn't want to. If not, he was afraid that Meredith would be disappointed. Yes, that's right, said Russell, bracing himself. I've specially prepared this segment for you. Grandma. Just to give you and Grandpa a surprise. Perry, who was sitting beside Russell, was flabbergasted. Didn't Captain Steele come because of the God of War? 
What has it got to do with you, Russell? Russell, what's going on? Did you really invite him? Perry asked. Yeah, Captain Chapman. I gave it a try at the war zone and it worked. Russell kept a straight face. Robert and Meredith got up and greeted them at the doors, with the latter smiling, I knew it. Russell is. A late bloomer. Robert and Meredith were brimming with joy. Seeing that, Caitlin and Aaron were surprisingly jealous. We were supposed to have gained the old woman's favor, but her attention has now shifted to Russell. Instead. They looked at Levi grudgingly. Getting the Iron Brigade's special cigarettes and liquors is nothing special. Inviting the military officers from the Iron Brigade is what counts. Following behind Robert and Meredith, Russell clenched his fists. He swore to work hard and turn all these into a reality. Just then, Captain Steele and the others had arrived at the doors. Upon seeing Meredith, Alfie came forward, wishing, Captain Alfie Steele of the Dragon Legion of the Iron Brigade and his three adjutants wish you a happy birthday, Mrs. Black. Mortimer, who was standing beside Alfie, stepped forward. The captain of the South War Zone. Mortimer Lambert, wishes you a. Seeing them offering their best wishes one after another, Meredith was very excited. Coming from the military themselves, they regarded Alfie and the others with more importance than those who were in politics like Graham. Especially since Alfie came from the Invincible Iron Brigade. This was such a great honor. Robert and Meredith were most pleased to see Alfie and the others attend the birthday banquet. However, Russell, who stood at the back was a little nervous. He was afraid of exposing himself. He didn't dare to greet them at all because he had never seen them before. Russell deliberately hid at the back, afraid of getting noticed. But Meredith pulled him to the front, asking with anticipation, I wonder what's Captain Steele's. Comment on my grandson Russell Black. Alfie froze. This old lady is so weird. I don't even know who's your grandson, how am I supposed to evaluate him? But at the thought that she was the grandmother of the God of War's wife, he said politely, Russell. Looks sharp and the country will be counting on him in the future. Ha ha ha, wonderful. Robert and Meredith couldn't help but laugh heartily at Alfie's high evaluation of their grandson. The Protector Chapter 194 God Bless the Black Family A blend of emotion fermented inside of everyone in the Black family, Russell's parents were so thrilled that they could almost cry while Quintus, Keen, and some other of Russell's cousins were truly stoked. The place seethed with enthusiasm, and the atmosphere was at its climax. Because that was an appraisal from the captain of the Iron Brigade, whose words were very authoritative. Robert and Meredith were so proud that they had forgotten about the special cigarettes and liquor that Levi had gifted them. Aaron and Caitlin felt wretched. The spotlight was supposed to be on them. The old lady had liked them most. But before they could bask in the limelight, the attention was shifted onto Russell. I've heard about Russell Black for a long time, Mortimer added. He will have a promising future if he becomes vice captain of the special security unit before 30 years old. Russell was feeling very emotional as well to receive Captain Steele and Captain Lambert's approval. Despite the blunder he had made. Captain Steele, Captain Lambert, Colonels, please, Robert and Meredith ushered them inside. But Alfie rejected the offer, we just came to greet you, Mrs. Black. We should make our move now. Does Captain Steele have any other urgent matters to attend to, asked Meredith, with an air of great surprise. Yes, that's right. The God of War of my division is going to inspect the Dragon Legion that I'm leading. I need to go back and get the troops ready, Alfie said. Mortimer nodded. Yes, Mrs. Black. My legion is going to be inspected as well. We need to prepare. Ourselves. What? The God of War of the Iron Brigade? He must be a famous general who shines on the battlefield. 
Robert and Meredith were filled with deep veneration. But as if she thought of something, Meredith pleaded, I guess we have no time and are not qualified to attend such inspections. Could you allow my grandson, Russell to visit and gain some insight, Captain Steele? Seemingly hesitating, Alfie agreed to her plea, OK, sure. The inspection takes place in a few hours. Russell, wait for our notice. Meredith and the rest of the Black family were all thrilled. If Russell visits the Dragon Legion, it would be great for his career prospects. After the Black family had sent them off, the birthday banquet continued. Meredith was obviously indifferent to Aaron and his family. At most, she would only say a word or two. To Levi. The conversation made during the birthday banquet now revolved around Russell. Levi was unfazed as he stared at the table of dishes and feasted on them. In the eyes of the others, his table manners was repulsive. It was as if he had been starving for over a week. Especially since Felix, Graham and other big shots were sitting at the same table, Levi's table manners was a big disgrace to Meredith. Meredith was displeased, but she couldn't say much seeing as Levi gifted her the special cigarettes and liquor. Indeed, Levi was uncouth. He should have watched his manners, especially since he now had Meredith's favor. Russell eventually got sick of it. Levi, come out for a moment. I need to have a word with you. Meredith looked at Russell approvingly. How astute. The problem has been resolved. Levi followed Russell outside. What do you want to talk about? Levi started while picking his teeth with a toothpick. How Russell wished he could punch him in the face at his sluggish appearance. But he said with a smile outwardly, I have a question, Levi. How did you get the special cigarettes and liquor of the Iron Brigade? The Protector Chapter 195 I had it delivered, of course, Levi chuckled. Delivered? Could it be someone from the Iron Brigade? Russell asked quizzically. Levi nodded. Precisely. Didn't you see him just now? What? You mean Captain Steele? Russell looked at Levi incredulously. Yeah, him. Why else would he be here if not to deliver the cigarettes and liquor? Levi said. Ha ha ha, Russell laughed out loud. This man can really talk big. I'll have another carload sent over. Levi said. Ha ha ha, nice, Russell responded sarcastically, looking at Levi as if he was a clown. I'll soon find out whether Captain Steele is sending another carload of special cigarettes and liquor or not. I'm going to the South War Zone after all. You were saying that you invited Alfie over, hey? Levi suddenly asked. Russell became a little flustered at that question. But what was there to be afraid of if Alfie didn't even expose him? Yeah, I invited him to congratulate Grandma on her birthday. Russell admitted tenaciously. Levi's grin widened meaningfully, making Russell uneasy as if Levi had seen through his lies. Not daring to stay with him any longer, he turned around and went back to the main hall. The birthday banquet finally ended after a few hours. Meredith had specially called Aaron and his family to stay behind, which made Zoe very happy. Russell took his leave as well. Grandpa, Grandma, I just received a notice asking me to hurry over to the South War Zone. Go on now. You're the pride of the Black family. Everyone must learn from Russell, Meredith. Praised. You must tell us everything when you come back, Quintus said. Thereafter, Meredith checked the headcount. Is everyone here? Caitlin, where's your son-in-law? I have no idea where he went, Mom, Caitlin replied. Whatever. Just let him be, Meredith dismissed him, for he was just an unimportant person. However, Caitlin and Aaron were furious. This is clearly a good chance, but that bastard went missing. How incompetent. At this time, Levi had called Abigail to send him to the South War Zone. As Russell was anxious, 
he made his way to the Dragon Legion's encampment at the South War Zone as quick as possible. Upon his arrival, he was like a country bumpkin who had just entered the city, everything was new to him. He looked around and dared not touch anything, for fear of breaking things. Alfie had arranged for a soldier to welcome Russell. Halting before a warehouse, there was a car parked at its entrance with a few men moving boxes and boxes of goods to a car. Noticing the packaging, Russell thought it looked similar to the special cigarettes and liquors that Levi had brought. May I ask what are these, comrade? Russell couldn't help but ask. Oh, these are the Iron Brigade's special cigarettes and liquors. The captain has ordered us to load a car of them to send them over to the Black family, the soldier replied. Russell was thunderstruck. Are they seriously sending a carload of these to the Black family? Levi was right. What is his identity? If getting two bottles of liquor and two packets of cigarettes means nothing, then getting a carload of these is a whole different problem. Russell arrived at the training ground in trepidation. The Dragon Legion and several thousands of soldiers had all assembled and lined up in columns. Looking ever powerful and ever triumphant. The Protector Chapter 196 Seeing the spirits of the Dragon Legion had Russell's adrenaline pumping. The pride and fervor in their eyes was so compelling that it could drive one crazy. They were whom Russell aspired to be. Their existence was fearsome. Although his regiment was at the forefront of the South War Zone, they were a far cry from the Dragon Legion. Russell and the others were seated at the observation deck. Everyone was waiting for the God of War of the Iron Brigade. If not for the regulations, Russell would have filmed everything. He was too excited. Everyone was waiting in silence. No one dared to speak a word the whole time. Finally, a car drove into the encampment and made its way quickly to the training. Base. Russell frowned when he saw the pink car from a distance. Where have I seen this car before? Isn't that Abigail's pink Maserati? The pink Maserati stopped at the training base. A girl alighted from the driver's seat. Isn't that Abigail? Russell was dumbstruck and when he saw the person coming down from the passenger's seat, he nearly suffocated. Levi. It's actually him. What are they doing here? That person can't be him, right? For a moment, it was as if Russell's heart had stopped beating. Levi told Abigail to stay where she was as he walked step by step toward the Dragon Legion. Seeing Levi approaching, all the soldiers lifted their chins up and stood upright. Like a pike. Alfie and Mortimer jogged toward Levi and saluted him. Reporting, God of War. The Dragon Legion and the South War Zone Legion have assembled. Awaiting. Your instructions, sir. What? God of War? The group observing was mind blown. No one had expected that the God of War of the Dragon Legion was the God of War himself. What was even more unbelievable to Russell was that Levi was the God of War. No wonder Levi acted so arrogant at the birthday banquet. No wonder Levi could present the special cigarettes and liquor of the Iron Brigade. No wonder Levi said he had Captain Steele deliver them. It's because Levi is the God of War. Levi came before the soldiers and commanded in a clear tone, at ease. The uniformed movements of thousands of soldiers were jaw-dropping. I'll keep this short. Since you've all come down from the front line, rest and reorganize, but training must still go on. You must always be ready for war. Levi lectured the Dragon Legion. He then looked at the Legion, smiling, the soldiers of Arudaya are tough. And so is our legion. Catch up on your training and be prepared at all times to sacrifice for the country. Despite Levi's brief speech, it ignited the fire in their hearts. God of war. God of war. Thousands of soldiers shouted vigorously. The scene was earth-shattering. It was definitely a scene Russell would never forget in this lifetime. After the inspection, 
Levi came toward Russell. Take a load of cigarettes and liquors with you later. But you should also advise. Grandpa and Grandma not to drink too much, Levi said. Yes, 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 facing Levi again, Russell was so scared that he was drenched. In sweat, even his speech was stuttering. With that, the carload of special cigarettes and liquors were moved into Russell's car. Russell arrived at the Black family's residence. A carload of the Iron Brigade's special cigarettes and liquors? Did Russell send them back? My grandson is too capable. Oh, my God! God bless the Black family! The Protector Chapter 197 The Black family was numb with shock when they saw Russell's car loaded with special cigarettes and liquors. Robert and Meredith's eyes twinkled. God has indeed blessed the Black family. My son is too amazing. Zayden. Praised. Robert and Meredith grasped Russell's hands, only to make him feel awkward. Because this had nothing to do with him at all. Grandpa, Grandma actually. This is enough, Russell, Meredith interrupted, thinking that Russell was trying to. Be modest. This carload of cigarettes and liquors are enough for the rest of our. Lives. Yet, yeah, you don't have to say much, Russell. We understand. Robert patted on Russell's shoulders. On second thought, Russell stopped trying to explain, remembering that he had signed a non-disclosure agreement to keep everything he saw a secret before leaving the South War Zone. Work hard, Russell. Your grandpa and I have decided to exhaust all our resources to nurture you, Meredith said. Quintus and the others were envious, and so were Aaron and Caitlin. Didn't Levi say he would send a carload of special cigarettes and liquors? Where is he? Robert asked Russell, so who did you meet today, Russell? Who's the god of? War of the Iron Brigade. Yeah, tell us, Russell. We wanna know. The Black family was curious. Russell gave a nervous titter. Grandpa? Grandma, as much as I want to tell you. I can never reveal his identity. I've signed a non-disclosure agreement. It even involves a non-disclosure agreement. Oh, God! Meredith and Robert looked at each other in the eye with a look of horror. But what I am sure of is, Russell continued, that the Black family will prosper. From now on. So Grandpa, Grandma, you guys have to be nicer to all the ants and uncles, such as Aunt Caitlin and Uncle Aaron. There's only hope if the Black family unites. Because the God of War was the son-in-law of the Black family, and Russell could guarantee that. Hence, he specifically reminded them by mentioning their names. That's a given. Robert and Meredith promised. We've accepted Caitlin and Aaron again. They are one of us now. Hearing that, Aaron and Caitlin couldn't hold back their excitement. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Meredith flashed a look at them. You should thank Russell. Thank you, Russell, the both of them said in unison. Russell gave an awkward smile. But your son-in-law is not too bad, Meredith said, be thought of something. Mom clearly liked Levi's presence the most just now. How did it become not too? bad in the blink of an eye. However, Caitlin was contented. At this time, Levi and Abigail had returned. Didn't you say you were gonna send another carload of special cigarettes and liquors, Levi? Logan sneered. Levi pointed at Russell's car. Didn't I have them deliver already? Just as Russell was about to speak, Logan roared, bullshit. Clearly, it was. Russell who sent these back? What the hell has it got to do with you? Yet. Yeah. You're too much. All of us saw that it was Russell who sent these back. You do have credit today, but you can't just take Russell's credit. Everyone mouthed off at Levi. Russell was vexed, but he couldn't get a word in edgeways. He's a god. How could mere mortals judge him? 
The Protector Chapter 198 The fact that you can get those special cigarettes and liquor means you are somewhat capable. As long as you act wisely, you could turn out quite well. But, don't try to seek loopholes and indulge in petty tricks, Meredith said coldly. Displeased with Levi's behavior. You two need to discipline him more. After all, Zoe has a bright future ahead of her, Robert said to Caitlin and Aaron. Yes, Mom and Dad. We understand. At their departure, Meredith asked, Russell, what do you think about Levi? Russell was scared stiff. How can I comment on this person? I still want to live. No comment, Russell replied. Logan, what do you think? Meredith asked again. Logan looked deep in thought. Levi is indeed capable, seeing how he could get his hands on the special cigarettes and liquor. But since he'd spent six years in jail, his powerful side has probably smoothed out, and he's picked up on many bad habits. I think it will be hard for Levi to develop. Meredith nodded in agreement. M.M., I think so too. The next day, everyone left one after another. When the Black family offered to give them a ride, Zoe rejected it and requested to take the high-speed rail instead. Mainly because she wanted to see what would happen to Levi at the security checkpoint. When they arrived at the security checkpoint, Zoe deliberately let Levi pass first. Seeing Levi pass through easily, they were stunned. Come out and go in again, Zoe demanded. Levi had no choice but to enter again. However, the alarm still didn't go off. Zoe was taken aback. Have I really mistaken? In fact, the system had been rebooted since Levi left that day. He could easily pass through all security checkpoints now without sounding off. The alarm. Just after getting on the high-speed rail, Alfie sent a message. The big shots of the South War Zone and South City just knew about your arrival at South City. Levi had already left when they came to look for him. Levi replied immediately. Tell them I'll definitely inform them the next time I visit. South City. On the high-speed rail, Caitlin said, Zoe, you should really consider the advice. That your uncles have given. What is it? Levi asked. Aaron sighed, Zoe's uncles had suggested that she sever all ties with the Lopez family and establish a new company. That's a great idea. She should have done that a long time ago. Levi raised both hands in favor of that suggestion. They're a bunch of assholes who can never be satisfied. Aaron shook his head. It won't be that easy. Dad has shares in Zoe's company. We'll have a tough row to hoe. Zoe was also worried about this. She knew Harry far too well. Zoe, just go all out. I'll handle it if there's any trouble, Levi said. He wasn't worried about the Lopez family now, but the retaliation of the North. Hampton Chamber of Commerce. Now that Levi Group was in his hands again, the Northampton Chamber of Commerce was bound to keep their guards up. After returning to Northampton, Kieran told him it was decided that Levi Group would merge with Garrison Group after negotiation and be named Morris Group. In remembrance of Morris Atkinson, Levi would also use Morris Group to destroy the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. It was equivalent to Morris himself trampling the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Levi understood that this would surely lead to objection from the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. But he would be there for the ceremony by then. The Protector Chapter 199 The renaming of Levi Group had created a storm in the entire city. Especially since it would be renamed to Morris Group, anyone who knew the ins and outs of the situation knew they were coming after the Rogers family and the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. It was an act of revenge. According to gossip, the person who now controlled Levi Group was Neil Atkinson, someone who had yet to appear in Northampton. Everyone was suspecting him to be a relative of Morris. 
because someone had discovered that Morris's parents had moved into the most expensive villa at Bayview Garden from the village and that Zoe's Imperial Meadows Limited had been receiving a huge chunk of investments from Levi Grube. The gossips had stated that the relationship between Neil and Morris was not so simple and that Neil was aiming for the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. On a small island at Northampton's Arier Lake, there were boats surrounding the island. On it stood hundreds of men in black with their waists bulging, obviously carrying a weapon. They were even military helicopters hovering in the sky from time to time, patrolling the perimeter. The worst part was that the entire scenic spot of Arier Lake had been booked. Today. And the person who did the booking was on this small island. On the island were six elders who were sitting by the lake, quietly fishing. Behind them stood eleven people, which included seven directors from the North. Hampton Chamber of Commerce, and four heirs of four noble families in North. Hampton, the Hendersons, Andersons, Williamsons, and Robinsons. The four elders fishing at the front were the current heads of the four biggest noble families, Wallace Henderson, Clifford Anderson, Baldwin Williamson, and Eric Robinson. They were the top four families on the list of the wealthiest families in North Hampton. The four elders were even more powerful than Glenn from the Rogers family. While the Rogers family's wealth amounted to 50 billion, the Hendersons Andersons, Williamsons, and Robinsons' wealth amounted to a hundred billion. Together, they had established the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. In short, they had occupied almost half of Northampton's economic lifeline. They were the real juggernauts of Northampton. The two other elders who were fishing with them were no less than they were. Grover Cook, who had now retired, was once the governor of Northampton. He had many disciples and his descendants all held important positions in North Hampton. Even the current governor, Jesse Nielsen, was his student. Jesse would often go to Grover to seek advice because there was a saying that Grover's words could make people grovel at his feet. The other elder was Xander Hoyles, the vice commander-in-chief of the North Hampton War Zone. Due to a transfer order, the position of commander-in-chief of the North Hampton War zone had been vacant, which meant that Xander was the leader of the North. Hampton War Zone now. The two of them were friends and classmates with Eric and the others. It wasn't uncommon for them to meet up for fishing. On the small island not far away was a platoon of guards. Any little decision made by these six elders was influential enough to shake up. The entire North Hampton. It was indeed the case because many things in North Hampton were conferred. By the six of them. If the four wealthiest families and Northampton Chamber of Commerce could achieve such success, it was needless to say that their connections ramified all over Northampton. From war zones to towns, everywhere had traces of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Hence there was this saying that messing with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce was akin to messing with Northampton's foundation. They were different from the Rogers family. It wouldn't be so easy to destroy them. Besides, if the Northampton Chamber of Commerce were to be destroyed, they still had Grover and Xander at the top. The Protector Chapter 200 According to this situation, it was simply impossible for them to be destroyed. But they didn't expect that their opponent was Levi the only five-star god of war in history. The god of war would crush everything. At this moment, Eric suddenly caught a fish. After putting it in the basket, he looked at Grover and Xander, smiling, Grover. Xander, have you two heard about the recent events in Northampton? The grizzled-haired Grover moved his fishing rod and said with a little doubt, Are you talking about the matter with Director Alaric Taylor of the Northampton Chamber of Commerce or the matter with the renaming of Levi Group to Morris? Group. Grover might be retired, but he still had everything under control. Wallace gave him a meaningful look. I supposed you can look at these matters. As one. You're suggesting that Neil Atkinson of Levi Group is behind all this, 
asked. Xander. Clifford nodded. Most likely. According to our investigations, Neil should be. Morris's uncle. He's changing the name of Levi Group to Morris Group to help. Morris Atkinson's best friend, Levi Garrison. That's why they invested in Zoe. And even took care of Alaric and Charles. We've questioned the Rogers family in the past for a few days, but they remain silent about relinquishing the Garrison family's properties and Levi. Group, Baldwin said. They only warned us to be careful, saying that we've met our match this time. In a word, Eric summed up. This mysterious Neil Atkinson is a powerful man. He's definitely something to be able to send Alaric to jail and retake Levi Group and Garrison Group from the Rogers family's hands. Those were the information that the four noble families had obtained. It was considered intimidating because other enterprises and families had yet to know about the change of ownership of Levi Group. To be honest, I've known you guys for over ten years now and I've never seen such somber expression on all four of your faces, Xander suddenly chuckled. Grover nodded. Exactly. It's my first time seeing you guys like this. It means that. Neil Atkinson is really stressing you out. Sure, there's stress, but it's just enough to get our attention, Wallace smiled. He can't threaten us. Eric stroked his long white beard, chortling, that is without a doubt. No one can mess with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Xander nodded. That's right. There's no way they can break apart the North. Hampton Chamber of Commerce. Metaphorically speaking, the Garrison family and the Rogers family were just growing saplings that could be uprooted by manpower while the Northampton Chamber of Commerce was a 10,000-year-old tree that would probably require 10 people to encircle it. It would be impossible to uproot it based on manpower alone. Clifford flashed a cruel smile. Although there isn't a threat, Neil Atkinson is really a thorn in the flesh. We must get rid of him as soon as possible. Understanding the meaning behind his words, Grover and Xander smiled, we can still find out his identity for you guys. With that, Xander suddenly caught a fish and threw it into Clifford's basket. Just like this. I caught a fish for you and it's up to you whether you want to release it or cook it. He was comparing the fish to Neil. The four of them nodded. 